this is heavy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, my little girl. I had a handboard come out. Okay. And it, like it, the... Yeah, it, yeah, the bigger one, and it was like a Toys R Us exclusive, and it came with like a, a half pipe or whatever. Okay. So <clears throat> we have a bedroom. It's like a craft room. And when we bought the house, it already had a desk kind of built. They took out the doors, and they built in this desk. So I've got a bunch of skate knickknacks and stuff up there, and I've got that handboard, and my little girl has seen it recently and she keeps asking me to open it i'm like baby that's the one toy oh it's here. still we in the pack it's still in the pack and everything it's just I've, yeah i've never opened it i have i have some of the smaller tech decks as well but just that handboard it was the way Dude, i found so out cool. about it was yeah. kind of cool because i literally was dropping my girlfriend off this is when i lived in san diego was dropping her <laughs> off at the mall where she worked and we got there a little early so we were just walking around i think we'd gotten like a milkshake or something and i got a call from black labels team manager and he's like, hey, man, I just want to let you know, uh, you know, we license these graphics out to Tech Deck, and I just found out they made an exclusive one, a handboard of yours, and it's at Toys R Us. And I just happened to be at a mall, so I was like, all right. So her and I went <laughs> to Toys R Us, and there it was just in this toy. I was like, holy shit. So Dude, that's yeah, crazy. Man. Yeah, I had a Tech Deck, and a, but a handboard, too. I had a couple okay. Tech Decks. Oh, that's what you But the handboard about. was big. It, it was in, like, a big yeah. box. Yeah. Like, it's, it's in its own screen, and then... I don't know it's just funny. She's she doesn't know it's like mine. She just thinks it looks cool. You know what I mean? She's supposed to cool. play with it. She, yeah, she's ride just it. like I'm yeah. like, no, no, no. That's Damn. sentimental. You don't understand, but it's it's a little sentimental. That's pretty tight. Well dude, that's cool, man. Good pretty, for you. I'm yeah, I seeing my my toys on the wall is kinda of funny. That's pretty tight. Well dude, I am so stoked to have you guys here. We got some uh hometown heroes, uh Ben Gilly and James Hardy hanging out, man. This is so cool. We're just cool. dorks, man. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Well, yeah, yeah so um to kind of kick things off i think it'd be rad to kind of hear you know we don't have to go way back in time but to kind of hear about how you guys kind of got into skateboarding and and hooked up with peter i know faith skate supply was like a huge stepping stone for for both of you guys 100 yeah. and uh i think it'd just be rad to kind of hear i know you're originally from mississippi mm -hmm. and uh i know yeah. you're from huntsville mm -hmm. kind of yep. yeah hung out at that park up there a lot and stuff and i love that park and so Sh uh, shout out to lydia gold yes <laughs> so yeah man how did um how did Birmingham become the thing, kind of the hometown for you guys and, and hooking up well, with Peter? For me, it was the classic as kids telling my parents I'm sleeping at so-and-so's house, and they tell their parents they're sleeping at my house, and we're both, we're all doing whatever. And we would come, we planned that and came to Birmingham and got a hotel room for the weekend. Okay. And, you know, thinking, the parents thinking we're at each other's house. How old are you at this time? Uh, 17 16 why birmingham yeah, we're in yeah. mississippi Long time. that's right. the closest big city big city and you know okay. and we, okay. we assume the biggest city Ooh, is going to have city. more to skate yeah, you know what I mean? yeah yeah okay and uh basically we were right we when we came in the first place we found was lynn park which is kind of like right in the middle of like north side downtown and it had more in that park than we really had in all the spots in mississippi in one area so when we first came, we didn't leave Lynn Park. We just skated there all weekend. Mm. And we didn't see one skateboarder. And then we did the trip again like two or three weeks later. And then some other skateboarders showed up. And we were going to leave, and they told us that Faith had opened like a month earlier. Okay. And so they took us to Faith. And I would order CCS or uh, – Beach Plus was actually what I would order back in the day. Which Beach was, Plus. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I think it, now the shop's just called Plus. Yeah. <clears throat> but back then it was a, it was like a Xerox copied catalog. You know, okay. it'd be have like yellow and pink paper. You'd get it in, but it had every skate product. It was just more. But where where is it based out of? Do you know? Where like the... Panama City, Florida. Okay, so right it's like it's Panama City. Yeah. not far. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. In there. It's not and like the West Coast. Right? Yes, okay. exactly. It was it was huge. I'll back yeah, so that's where I would huge. that's where I would learn about skate <laughs> stuff was from these catalogs. And like I said, it was Xerox, so you weren't getting proper full images. Oh, sure. And so when I found out a skate imagine. shop was open <laughs> here, I'm like, oh hell, a, a two and a half hour drive, two hour drive. I'd yeah. rather do that than order stuff because you could actually pick up the stuff. Because oh, yeah. I'd had too many horror stories where you order something, 
And me as a kid, not thinking about sizes and this and that, you just order because of the graphic or something. Yes, dude. So and you get man. it in, you're like, oh, oh this what is, was I? Yeah, this is horrible. Yeah, it's like so, a seven inch board, and it's like so tiny. Yeah, yeah so you come crazy. to the shop, and you're like, this graphic's cool, and you pick it up, you're like, this thing's tiny. Yeah, yeah I can't. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> right. So it, it changed everything. That's what first the city brought me to Birmingham, but once I found a skate shop here, I I came here as much as I could just to. Because, like, it was cool. You could walk into a skate shop mm-hmm. yeah, as opposed to I just had a catalog. In Mississippi, there was nothing. No skate shops no in Mississippi. Skate, nothing, okay. nothing skateboarding. What like, part of Mississippi? Columbus. Columbus, Mississippi. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, basically a, a military that? base is there. My dad was in the Air Force. Okay. And so that's why we, he got stationed there. They're, my, him and my mom are both from Gunnersville, Alabama. Okay, so, that's so roots in, Gun- in Alabama. Yeah, yeah. okay. Gotcha. But I was born in Marietta, Georgia, because I don't know. So if you're you're all over the there. southeast. I'm all over the southeast. <laughs> yeah, 100%, man. So. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, um, we had Peter on a couple episodes ago, and he talked about Lim Park just being like oh, the okay. greatest thing since sliced bread. Just yeah, all the things to skate and ledges and. Skate. Well, you know how yeah. uh, what was it Love Park? Yeah, and all it was, all yeah. like that's kind of what it's Lynn been, Park was for Birmingham. It's yeah. like our and, plaza. And, yes, you know, or whatever. in the in the nineties. But uh, it quickly became... This, this is before like, my time. Like, yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah by the time he came around, it kind of was a, a big bust, yeah. and nobody skated there anymore. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. like, how Peter described it on his, it was the plaza, like, era. It was. So it, it really Lim, was. Lim Park was just a place that had, you know, things that it looked like you could skate. They are a lot harder than you think. But <laughs> it was the plaza. It was, yeah. Time, yeah. So. It was a lot there. For Birmingham. Yeah. So. Well, like I said, I came from Mississippi, and that one plaza... Had stairs, ledges, sure, every, yeah, you know what I mean, like little downhill stuff, like rail, everything, just like, concrete in general. Concrete for me, had, man, uh, had marble, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, little, like what was that Yo, little marble manual pad? The shout, out, I'll shout out the three stair hubba. I love that thing. Yes, that's would, yes, that thing is so fun. I'd skate that I'm thing like, today, but hundred <laughs> percent. Well, yeah, man, I grew up small town, Pleasant Grove, kind of south of Birmingham, and. I mentioned earlier, like on another episode, like the road that went to my house wasn't even paved for like the longest time. And so yeah. there was nowhere to skate. And my mom wasn't bringing me downtown to let me skate, you know, 10 years old, 12 yeah. years old. And yeah. so, you like, built a ramp, did you not? Yeah, we built a ramp. Like, my dad was cool and like he skated when he was a kid. So he kind of got it. Like, once I got my first board, he was like, okay, I get it. You know, you want to skate? Let's build yeah. a ramp. <laughs> and then uh, once I got a little bit older, you know, he, you know, Faith was located over there on Magnolia, mm-hmm. and so I, my parents would bring me down and let me get aboard and, you know, kind of hang out a little bit, but they weren't letting me just, like, being a shop kid and, like, staying and hanging out and well, stuff. Well, it was so. across the street from the get Southtown Project. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I mean? so so, it, it in was, my head, I was like, dude, just, like, there's all these other kids hanging out. Just let me stay. And they're like, no, nope. no, 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 you're not going to do that. So. Those, were the, those are the glory days. Yeah, that, it really was. Like, it was so... So fun. It was so raw, and I didn't really see it as that back then you know what i mean like yep. cross street from the projects uh always shenanigans going on you know somebody wants to use the bathroom and he's actually in there shooting up or something oh, you know dude. what i mean like you, you you come to open the shop one morning and there's bullet holes all in the front of the building because there was a drive-by the night before you know what i mean it's like but we didn't see it as that that was just two by four part of it kind of it was but two, that wasn't it you two, know what i mean two by fours Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. <laughs> yeah, so I, I heard on other interviews you talked about, like, kind of getting jumped over there at the ghetto banks oh, yeah. or something and, and pretty wild. So I can imagine, yeah, be kind of yeah. – if I was a parent, I probably wouldn't let my kids go there. But. Yeah, that's the thing is, like, I'd moved here. Yeah. I, m- I moved here – I was either 17 and turned 18 around I moved here or 18 and turned 19. I can't remember. It's blurry. But I, I moved here real young and – uh it was real naive to the world, you know what I mean. So I'm skate. I would skate ghetto banks by myself with a tape player, with headphones <laughs> tape player. on. No, no different than almost yeah. what we're wearing now, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Just skating around, you know what I mean. And yeah, always get in trouble, but come back again the next day, like yeah. not knowing any better. Well, that's awesome, man. And so, uh, what was the Huntsville scene like when you were kind of getting into skating? And obviously, world, uh, world conspiracy is up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. They were the. Um... There's a skate shop. I think Peter mentioned it. it was like yeah. A skate shop slash like rave shop. And, skate uh, shop slash rave, rave shop. shop. That seems yeah. to be a common thread <laughs> yeah. with like skate shops. And, well, yeah. Faith was uh, 
Yeah. A yeah. graffiti shop. Yeah. As yeah, well, yeah. you know. When, yeah, that's what Peter was making. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was it was cool, you know. It's like you got a skate shop. And they opened a park. When I started skating, I was 12. So they opened a park right before I, like, turned 13. And, uh, you know, what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just you would that talk just, that. just a little bit quiet. Yeah, oh, there you go. Uh, you go. Sounds good, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, I told you I talk quiet. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, shut up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I started skating at 12, and then they opened up a park, like, right before I hit 13, and I had no idea about World Conspiracy or anything like that, so I would just skate the park any chance I got, and, uh, you know, weasel my way there if I could, and <clears throat> I never was, like, involved with World Conspiracy, so once I got better, I was just a dumb kid, you know, paying attention to, like, oh, you send a tape, you, you know, you get sponsored if you send a tape, and I think I sent one to Plus, or Beach Plus. Oh, you did you really? I think I, I did. Know that. Yeah. I'm I'm if he listens to this, I'm, I'm sure he has it, which is embarrassing. Um oh, and it's very bad skating. But I sent one to Faith. It was the same bad So you just skating. sent them to like local shops that you okay. Yeah, ones I was into. Sure. Because poor conspiracy just wasn't doing anything for like you know, just like the community at the time and stuff. Like no offense or anything like that. But okay. I just wanted to be involved with like you know I was always kinda curious, like with World Conspiracy being right there <laughs> in your backyard versus Faith being um you know, yeah, in Birmingham, I was like, "Why?" But there yeah. was just a disconnect. Like, I remember I was doing like board slides one day. He's like, was "Just a regular board slide." He's like, "That's front side." I was like, "All the magazines say it's backside." He's like, "Oh, they're wrong about that." I was like, "What in the world?" So I was like, "Who owns He's, the skate shop here?" Come on, <laughs> I'm not saying that, <laughs> and I'm not trying to say anything bad about right, that. Right. I was just like, to me, I was like, I want to be around people that know what skating is and skating is what's going on, and so. Send it to, you know, plus, I think he said it too, you know, you could look at, you know, what is going on in the skate world. And so, send one to Faith, and then I actually, I should have brought it. Peter sent me, like, a written letter. Like, really? Hey, this is how we run things. Like, Get that framed on your wall? No, I have it in my house. I should have brought it. <laughs> Dude, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he was just like, this is how we run things. Like, you're not just going to be sponsored or whatever. And he's like, you want to come and hang out, basically? Like, by all means, come hang out. We'll show you around for the weekend. And so me and my buddy Ross Martin from Huntsville drove down, hung Shout out, out stay with stay with Craig. Okay, yeah, Craig. <laughs> yeah, Pickle. Craig. He had a girlfriend that was popping pimples on his forehead that night. But so we came here, skated with the Faith dudes. I did a crook back lip, and this dude chewed my ass like mm-hmm. I've never been chewed in my life. What? That is not how I remember you telling me. You. I did a crook back lip, and as soon as I rolled away, you said, "Oh my fucking god!" Or no, that I, that's exactly. I, I heard you. I heard you said I went kind of like, Ugh, or something. No, and no. you were like, "All right, I'm not doing that trick anymore." <laughs> I never did it again. Yeah, I mean, th- well, yeah. I think everybody's thankful I'm, for that. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, yeah. no, anyway, crook back lips. All right. I was, dude. I was terrible, but um, it's like the Benihana of Ryan <clears throat> tricks. It's the worst. I'm sorry. Oh, no. hey, I mean, I. Done plenty of Benihanas. I'm so, sorry, I you mean, had to. You do actually. Yeah, I, I, I can do a mean Benihana. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, God, never well, I could. Either. I, I don't know if I could pull that one out now, but yeah, it's but, not an easy trick. I mean, <laughs> hate on all you want. I can't imagine it's easy. Anyway. Yeah, it, it's a funny one. It's like but a anyway, trick. hung out for that weekend, and then after that, I just kept coming back down. Kind of just annoyed everybody, and just like kind of wouldn't leave. Yeah, I was. I think I was living in California at this point. And so I you're back, you're already like. Yeah, I'm already on, on label, label and yeah. stuff. Okay, cool. And then I come back in town. But for, for the label premiere. Is that what it was? Yeah. The label pre- okay. Because you weren't really which, around which, before that. Which yeah. premiere? Kills or? Probably, yeah, probably label Kills. Okay. No, no, it was Blackout. Was Blackout? It Blackout? Oh, wow, okay. So I forget the gap Dude, between it, y'all's like, careers. Like, it, it's a blur, yeah. yeah. Oh, and that was the other thing. Like, I knew who he was, and I was like, oh, he writes for Faith. I was like, I want to, you know, I want to be a part of that. Uh, okay, okay, so I got I was you. Like, he was, fuck. He was one of my favorite skaters. Didn't want to. Say that. I'm sorry. Bullshit. Anyway. Oh. And oh. I mean, we all. Fu- I mean, like, we'll get into that. Yeah. But anyway, I was like, oh man, these dudes are cool. They get it. You know, like mm-hmm. it, it seems like a rather scene than what was going on in Huntsville. Huntsville is like it's awesome. Like I love growing up there. I love growing up skating there. But there's not really like a, you know, a scene and people don't really hang out besides you just like see each other at the skate park. So when I came to Faith, I was like, all oh, these dudes are homies. Like they skate together all the time. Like they have each other's back. I was like that's cool shit like i want to be around that and so i just like like i said i just kept coming around annoyed peter and then they were 
I'm not sure if they were filming for the reason to believe video yet. But we always were, because basically when I first <clears throat> moved here, Joel was always filming, yeah. trying to put something together, but never really had. I don't know if back then he had like a vision of what he wanted, which what ended up being, you know what I mean? But I know he he wanted to film and do a video, so he was always filming. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, when cause I remember when I first came around, he was filming because I I remember. Uh, being at the shot when he literally first got the the VX one thousand and like iconic camera because I remember he like he opened it up and I was talking about it he was like I was just talking about it and looking at it and he was he almost like looked at me like you're getting too close you're to too this close camera, you, know <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you need to back did, did up you, yeah, I wasn't even like reaching to touch it but did you ever touch this camera he wouldn't even let me put a finger on that thing dude yeah, I, I mean, probably wouldn't on, either man yeah. I coveted that camera like yeah. dude nobody I yeah mean, and this is this is also before we knew anything about it. Sure. You know what I mean? And they come up, you look at the footage, you're like, I don't I don't know what the big deal is. You know what I mean? It was, I don't know. It was, it's funny. And looking Best back things. now, I'm like, dude, it looks so good. I don't know it what, looks so what good. I was thinking. Like, so the footage he was shooting, was that some of the footage that ended up being um, your sponsor me stuff for the label? Yeah. Or anything yeah, that ended yeah. up on the label kills? Uh, yeah. Some of it was sponsor me tape, and then a lot of it ended up in the <clears throat> first Faith video. Okay. And... That's kind of how I ended up getting on labels, filming for that video, like this whole weird series of events. But That's yeah. what that, and when I sent that tape to Peter, he sent me a copy of the 2000, I think it's just called Faith's Gate Supply 2000. Oh, like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. a little, little yeah. montage, yes, yeah. I remember that. And yeah. so he sent it to me, and this is before I even actually came, and I was like watching that video every day, and I was like, man, this is all Birmingham or Alabama in my yeah. mind. Yeah. I was stupid, still am, but... At that time, I was like, man, this is all, like, in a place that's close by, and these dudes are, you know, they know what they're doing. I was like, that's kind of the reason, too. I sent it, and or not it sent, but came around and annoyed everybody until they let me in. Well, we didn't actually know what we were doing. We were just winging it. But it turns well, it, out, it, it we, like you know, it. we weren't doing it any different than when I went out west. It was like, oh, it's the same thing, you know? Well, I know a lot of skaters came through town and, and, you know, just signings and demos and stuff at the slab and stuff. And it's like, I don't know, for what little part (laughs) I was there and and seeing, like, the pros hanging out, they were all like, dude, this shop is so cool. Like, just the whole look and aesthetic to it. That was also the era of skate shops being kind of a a big thing, you know what I mean? Because skateboard companies needed skate shops to buy their products, but also give them, like, I don't know, like, I don't want to say legit legitimacy or whatever but you know what i mean like that it was different back then i feel than everything now it seems like it's more instagram and like this sure. and that that was like it was almost like you know lately there's been a lot of like buy local kind of thing or whatever sure, sure. that's almost what it felt like in the skateboard community organically it was like yeah support your local skate shops so companies would go to cities that had local skate shops and not like mall shops or whatever you know sure. what i mean and so the skates skate shops almost had its own little scene or whatever I yeah guess, and that's know? what i was gonna say is like faith had like a scene they had like a you know everybody was like down for faith like yeah. it didn't matter if you're from huey town if you're from you know uh hoover or whatever they just had like this whole crew that everybody wanted to be down with faith and uh, going back to why i didn't write for world conspiracy we didn't have that there so yeah it was just a different like vibe and like, I just wanted to skate, and I wanted to be a part of something. But, I mean, I had my close friends there, still do to this day. But it was just a different vibe. Once I came here, I was like, ooh, this, this is the shit I kind of want to be a part of. Though. So. Sure, that's awesome, man. So um, getting getting on label, you were filming for the first Faith video, and a lot of that footage ended up being uh, sponsor tape for... Yeah, yeah. My, how, my, how did that work out, man? How did, like, who well, sent it? And, well, basically, a buddy of mine's sister lived in San Diego, and she was getting married. And so he was going out there and didn't want to be out there just with family and his sister. He wanted a friend to come out. So I went out with him. And uh, while we were out there, a a buddy that had – he would lived in Birmingham, and I would actually did valet parking with him. We worked together, but he was friends with Jamie Thomas. Well, when Jamie, casual friends, yeah, yeah, basically, because he was from Dothan. We, 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 Chad Foreman. We all went to Dothan for a grand opening over their skate park. Okay, and then we that one trip, we immediately became intertwined with the Dothan skate scene. Within I don't know a few years, most of them had moved to Birmingham. Like we were all super friends or whatever, and and Chad was one of those guys. Well, Jamie started Black Box and came and got Chad to help him run it so chad moved 
out west. So anyway, that that was the precursor. My friend goes out there for the wedding. I go with him. Chad's already out there starting Black Box. And we end up going with Jamie and him to a demo called Glenfest somewhere. Glenfest, in, okay. I can't remember where it was. It was a little, like, it's near Anaheim or somewhere like that. But anyway, that's where I met Adam Alfaro. Okay. And he was like, yeah, we're looking for new AMs for label. And he, I was like, He, he cool. dusted you, man. What? I said he dusted you at that contest. Uh, I don't mean. Well, <laughs> no, he tried to get my number at the top of this ramp. And I'm like, all right, well, when this is all over, I'll find you. But when it was all over, I looked yeah. for him, and I didn't find him. So I was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> and I mentioned it to Danny. It was like, oh, yeah, this dude said they were looking for AMs, and he wanted to get my number. And that was it, you know. And then when we get back to Birmingham – I'm hanging out in the shop one day, and Peter runs up. And he goes, what's this about you maybe can do something with Black Label? And I'm like, oh, no. I just met Alfaro, and he said It's this. Alfaro, dude. Yeah, he you doesn't know, know what, what he's talking like, about. Just, yeah. He said it in passing. It's like, I because I didn't put any weight into it or sure. whatever. And then basically. Was Alfaro like a recognizable name? Yeah, oh, yeah. He, he, he had a 411 part come out. Okay, about, yeah, yeah. Like, that was a banger. Uh, sure. Excuse me. And uh, so basically. Once they found out that story, Peter and Joel, because we'd been filming for the Faith video or whatever, Joel just edited together a quick Sponsor Me tape. Okay. And then they came in the shop one day and was like, hey, we edited you a Sponsor Me tape. Just get the address. And I was like, all right. So I called up Black Label, <laughs> which, is, which is so funny in retrospect. I've never heard this part. <laughs> because they never answered the phone. Sure. So when I called them, Lucero answers the phone. He's like, hello? And I mentioned, I'm like, hey, man, this is going to sound dumb, but <laughs> I met a guy at one of your demos, and he said that you guys were looking for AMs, and he wanted me to send in a tape. Uh, and he's like, what's your name? I'm like, Ben. He's like, uh, where are you at? I'm like, I'm in Alabama. And he's like, yeah, I remember him telling me about you or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> literally, I was like, really? All right. And he's like, yeah, and he just gave me the address. And so I talked to him for a little bit longer, and that was it. Gave the address to Peter. And then didn't think much about it. So maybe like two weeks later, I'm at the shop and Peter had to run some errands to like go to the bank or something. And like we always would do that. If we were at the shop and he needed to do something, we would just work the shop and he would leave. So literally like he leaves the shop. It was like three minutes later, the phone rings and it's Lucero. And so I'm at the shop on the phone with Lucero for like half an hour. No customers, nothing. Get off the phone with Lucero. Three minutes later, Peter walks in. It was like the timing. You know, it was one of those things like it was perfect timing or whatever. But Peter walks in, and I'm, 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 I'm like hanging out the phone, and I'm like looking weird. He's like, what? I go, I think I just got on flow for Black Label. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, it was John Lucero. And, yeah, it was – we got my first box in, and then we were filming for the video. So we were always – Peter was always shooting photos while Joel was filming. So – since we were constantly filming for a video, we kept sending them updates of what I was doing to just let them know I'm out there working or whatever. Did they have any other writers on the East Coast? Uh, uh, they were, were looking kind of at the same uh, scenario? Pat Smith in uh, New York. <clears throat> okay. And I think that's the only other East Coast. Uh, well, Jub from Chicago and Melcher. Not so they sure. were kind of brought, you know, doing yeah. the whole, you know, U.S. Or okay. But yeah, cool. you know... Um, yeah, basically, was just a, a random phone call. And since I kept sending them footage or whatever, literally one day, opening up a trans world, and one of the photos Peter had sent was a full page ad. Really? Like, welcoming me as an am. And, and that was, they, they didn't, didn't even tell, tell you. No, you just, had, just, you had just had flipped it through. You're like, what the Peter's f like, dude, you might want to look at the new issue of trans world. What, I can't remember what it was. Yeah, but yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a rail in Brookwood I did. Okay. And uh, Big ass rail. Yeah, that Jamie was supposed to come in town to do. And Ch Chad, who I told you, you know, started Black Box. Yeah. This is when we were doing valet. He told me about this rail. And I was like, I don't know but what rail you're talking about. And so he told me about it, and I went and looked at it by myself one day. And I remember, like, pulling up to it and looking <laughs> at it. And I was like, no. I think I could do this rail. And I'd never done anything like that. But yeah. For some reason, I thought I could do it, and every day when I got off work, I would go drive by that rail and look at it, and I'd roll up to it on my board by myself. There's a couple times when I was by myself, 
I got so pumped. I wanted to try it right. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I, I don't care try if anybody it. sees it, man. I'm doing it. Well, yeah. no, I was like, no, I need somebody to document yeah. it so yeah. in case I, I die. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was gonna say we don't we don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I knew I could get pumped up to try it because I'd already I did it by myself, and so. Okay. But I was like, Jamie's supposed to come in town and do it. I'm like, no, this no, is no, this no, is no, my, no. and on my town. I'm yeah. like, I, if I think I can do it, I got to do it. So I, it was like, I got to do this before. You're not gonna let and, the cheap steal your trick. Yeah, and so, but yeah, it ended up being my first ad. Peter shot the photo. Yeah, it was kind of like the, I don't know, everything lining up, you know? Dude, that's yeah, it awesome, was, It was man. kind of a cool scenario. That's, where, that's, that's when I thought you were cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, only then. <laughs> only then. <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't really – it was one of those things I wasn't shooting to do. It just – but once it – like, I had my foot kind of in the door, I was like, oh, might as well go just for go it. Go for it. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's – how it ended up, I guess. Now, did that trick end up? What trick was that in, like? I think label? it was my last trick in, in Label the, Kills. Okay, so that yeah, rail, that, that, yeah, that yeah. slow, and dude. Yeah. I yeah, I'm I'm creeping. And it looks I, like I'm almost had a stop, and I all the top of it. I was about I mean, to say. I mean, it looks like there's no run. Yeah. It, well, no, no, it was plenty of run. Oh, okay. But like I said, if I skated that rail a few years later, I would have skated it differently because that was sure. literally the first time I'd ever skated anything that big. Yeah. There, you there know was, what I mean, there was a time when he went slow. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, dude, it's funny yeah. you say that because I was trying to draw similarities between you guys, like skating style and stuff. And the first thing that stuck out to me was just how fast you guys skate. Like, at I don't skate fast. Every, I think you do. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't skate fast. Well, I got a story. My only story of you was um, oh god, hanging out with uh, a buddy of ours, Kyle Hudson. If I was an asshole, I'm sorry. Oh, Kyle. Oh, Kyle. Okay, okay, and yep. we were at the uh, Huntsville Park. Shout out to Kyle. And Shout out to Kyle. Sorry about that one night. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know he's going to hear this and be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. But um, we were skating at the park, and he was like, man, James was here the other day. And he says, everybody in Alabama skates too slow. We need to step it up a notch. <laughs> You know, I, I said this. Yeah, he said to me that that's what you said to him. Yes. He and so said the that, rest of the said day, that, he said that. Like, if you're familiar, for anybody that's listening, familiar with the Huntsville Park, like where that where the the big quarter pipe at the end of the park is, you yeah. Come across the top next to the handrail and yeah. come down that ramp, and then there was just like some flat bars. He said you were like charging all the way from the top and then coming down just to skate the flat bar. It's probably because I was trying to be like this dork. Okay, so but either way, like, he was skating like, fast. It, you lit a fire in him, and the rest of the day, I feel like he was just like charging so fast to go hit every little, you know, just like the little uh, concrete ledge down there and stuff. Yeah. Y- speed is a young man's game. I don't, I don't skate that fast. Anymore. Well, anyways, that that <laughs> that's my one memory. And uh, but looking at y'all's video parts, I was like, dude, it looks like you skate pretty freaking fast. I think I didn't have much pop, so I was like, if I'm skating, like, there's a rail he always used to skate, and I, he would haul ass to it, too, but I was like, I got to go fast just to get on the damn thing. You sure. Know what I'm you talking about uh, Mirlands? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll so I would just haul ass just, well, and I got knocked the fuck out yes, there. Yes, you did. Uh, I don't know if I can say that word. So no, you're good. Okay. No cool. worries. Anyway, but yeah, so I just went fast because I didn't have that much pop, so I was just like, okay. I think later in life I got pop, but I was, I don't know. I was just trying to. Do what the fuck ever. I don't know. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say about myself. So, so that rail you said you got knocked out was that the the end of the reason believe clip in the is it that rail during the slam section? No, that's just I okay. Know, did that, I don't know. Like that's just because that the, was like that's just dude. that's just one of the knockouts. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been knocked out. What, Mar- see, I don't know the names of all the spots like you guys probably do, but yeah, yeah. Maryland's is it's a fourteen stair that's real mellow. Uh, Figgy did a front salad back when he out. Oh, okay. Um, That's to get the long run. It's like at a high school yes. or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the best run yeah, yeah, you yeah. ever have. You did a yeah. whole like line yes. on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah this spot. idiot decided to do a line between that big ass rail and that rail. So, well, I mean, well they kind of yeah. fast forwarded because you're just like pushing, pushing, oh, pushing, pushing. Oh yeah, that was a uh, that was a contention. <laughs> <laughs> they had. They, they first edited it. It was chopped up. You couldn't even tell it was a line. It looked like three separate clips with like some weird strobing in it was between. Well, that's shit. the label like, style, man. It was, like, but I'm like, hey, I, but, like, I'm like, at least let it know that I did it in one go. As sure. As opposed, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I, that's all. I'm like, like no, 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 no. We got we to gotta redo you this. You chop it up and do some weird stuff. You know what they should have done? They should have left it just silent. Like, no music to it. That's kind of how yeah. I envisioned it. Is yeah. that like... Because no, that's yeah. like once I make the trick on the last reel, that's the beginning of my part. I know because it's like you fifty at twenty two, and then there's like this weird fast forward, and it's like you might giggle at it because it's like what is that editing? But then you back nose grind a bench after a fucking fifty and a twenty two, and then you front smith a big ass reel also. So 
They should have just left it plain. I, I was trying to front salad it, but I took was yeah. it like three really good slams. You don't. And I was but like, you I ended get... up getting the salad, right? No, I, no, I'd way. already already filmed the salad as a right, single. Right, 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 right. And I was like, well, I already have the single. If I film a line and do a salad at the end, they can cut them together, right? You know, or whatever. Right. And uh, but yeah, I took some pretty good slams oh, I'm to sure. where I'm like, all right, I've got one more in me. I'm trying to smith it, and if I don't get it, we're gonna have to figure something else out. Okay. You slamming? No. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, right? Me too. Austin. All right, so you're on label, you're killing it, and then James comes into the picture, and uh, he's hanging out and uh, being a shop rat at, at Faith. And stuff. I just I ruined so many. Well, things. no, I remember I came into town, and we went to go film him doing a. He tried to kick up this gap. This it was, it's now the police station near Five Points. Oh shit! But yeah, he because remember we had a ladder in the middle of the road because Joel was trying to get like an above angle. So we had to watch for traffic okay. if cars were coming. Like we had to run, like, set up the ladder, or get it out of the road, or whatever. Oh my god! Okay. You, have a, you have a good memory. But he was, yeah, he That's was crazy. He was kick flipping it. I remember he was la- like eating doing shit. great kick flips. You know, I was because I remember Andy was going fast. Because I'm is, telling this, you, you skated fast. This is when dude. I first met I've him. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm on this ladder helping Joel or whatever, and he's trying to first couple tries. And I'm like, holy shit, this kid's like going for it. You know what I mean? And he had a really good kick flip. But every time he's stuck, he would get will bite, Ooh. and then uh, we always called him Scorpion King because he would <laughs> like he always would just land on his chest and he'd kick himself in the back of his head with his he always scorpioned. Yeah. He wasn't that night, but he was piling. He would kick flip real was, good, was catch it, shit. stick it on the ground. It was like he was landing in tar. You know what I mean? <laughs> his board would not move. All the momentum went to his yes, body. He yeah. just would, bam. I knew what to do. I just didn't know how to roll away. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, trust me. That's the I was, how it works, right? I was but, not good. I was just like, I'm a fucking hook. That's pretty much all. But no, he was good. But that's the thing. He had commitment. You know, I was like, all right, well, this kid's like, tr- you know what <laughs> I mean? Obviously, like, there's talent here. Yeah, and, well, yeah. the, you don't like, I don't have much talent, but I, well, I've always told I have, I've been, I have a lot of heart. Like, I'll, I won't give up on a trick unless I physically can't walk or something. You know what I mean? Like, and that's also part of why I went fast is that, like, I know I don't have the biggest <clears throat> trick bag or whatever, but like, I like the way basic stuff looks sure, going yeah. fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, Because um, yeah. I'm always I'm thinking of like watching like Wade Spare and stuff just skate a a, a, a spine ramp, mm-hmm. and like I don't, yeah, it's insane how you can go that fast and have that much control on something. You know what I mean? And look that good. It's Cardinal. so crazy you bring up Spare. He was like a truck driver, right? Dude, and yes. like did the mm-hmm. thing yeah. over the truck and stuff. And I was like, dude, that's he's a very unique yeah. person. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, you're hanging out at the shop and stuff. How did you start getting? I mean, obviously you ended up on real, but what did that look like? And getting your was Peter on you the same way he was on Ben? Well, like, come on, you got to put a part together. You got to get black label on. slept on him. I was trying to get him on label for a sure. long time. Do you well, remember that? I, do you remember oh, me yeah. like? So there was a there was a, a an attempt to get you on label. Oh, a hundred percent. Okay, because I'm like, hey, you, Break, you breaking, think, you breaking think news. I'm jumping down these rails, and I'm like, he's younger than me and he's already doing what i'm doing so like you know you've you've got to do something with him and what was that dude's so name? What, what was the deal what was that dude's name lucero no 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 the team manager at the time oh tom i can't remember his last name. he's the one that was like just you need to be like be quiet like i'll call you when i'll call you i was like okay what yeah what, uh, I didn't, what I was didn't that dude's name that. i can't remember That's a little harsh. i went out to california with him right yeah yeah that yeah. No, I don't even know if it was that. I just used to live with him when I was like a kid in the summer. Like, well, who would we lived at? We lived in what Avondale, right, yeah. right, right, oh, yeah. right around yeah, the corner, right, right up the hill actually. And yeah. I would just stay on his couch, and he was just giving. Me, I looked like him, just a little kid version. Because, <laughs> yeah. You know, like he gave me all his boards and shoes and like everything sure, that he would yeah, get, yeah. I would just be wearing. And then uh, I think we may, it might have been after we went to California, and after your best friend Heath did all that stuff. I wasn't going to bring up the <laughs> ETH incident, but... Oh, uh, we don't have to bring it up. But, it's a yeah. joke. So this is around the same time of that. Don't be mad at, don't be mad at me. He's your boy. <laughs> I ain't mad at nobody. <laughs> I ain't mad at you either. You send uh, him a Christmas card or anything? No. Uh, uh, I'll do it this year. I'll do it uh, this year. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, no, we got back, and I think I met him out there when we went out that way. To yeah, b- I, think I, I think I took you by Black Label. Yeah. The so manager of Black Label is what we're talking about. Team manager. Team manager. I, I took okay. him to Black Label. Okay. Because, you know... When we first went out, we were down in San Diego. We went to Tumyeto. I don't even remember where Black Label was. It's in, it was in near Costa Mesa. Yeah. Up, up north a little bit, near Anaheim and all that. 
But yeah, we were because we were in San Diego, and then we went up to L.A., which is where like my friends were living. And we were gonna go stay up there, so on the way we stopped at Black Label or whatever, and yeah, that's when I introduced them. I didn't know about some phone call or. or well, he was super you nice in my face, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you know, like Mountain California, I'm doing. Yeah. So at this point, do you have any like real sponsors or on Flow or anything? No. Uh, I was okay. on Ben Gilly Flow. Ben Gilly like, Flow. Okay. Yeah, about, yeah, yeah. I was going Sweet. on going on like two years. Ben Gilly Flow. So okay. I was doing good. That's uh, a, yeah, man. Yeah. Pretty nice. And then so I met that dude, and you know, to my face, he was like, "Yeah, man, just send me an email." And this was before like I don't even know if I had a cell phone at the time. I think probably, probably not. Yeah. Email. Yeah, and so he was like, just email me. I was like, okay, cool. I don't think just, I had a cell phone back then. Yeah, I don't think we did. We That was the worst trip. We Remember, we had no AC on the way home. You're talking about it was the worst trip. You always said it was the best trip. I mean, it's the best trip, but All I'm talking right. about the drive out there. It was no AC. It, well, it was once we got in the desert. Yeah, that was pretty rough. Yeah, it was rough. Anyway. We were in, a, in an Astro van. Was it an Astro? It I thought was an it was, Astro van, yeah. I thought it was like a, yeah, okay, GMC something. Anyway. Well, that's, yeah. That's oh, awesome. the door broke, too. Remember that? You got mad as hell. <laughs> I don't remember that. But I just remember going to the desert and it was brutally hot. Brutally like, hot. No AC. The windows down was blowing higher. And, and, you know, it was like 110 degrees out. Yeah, I've driven through the Mojave with I no was about AC. To say, been my, there, done that. Yeah, yeah, this guy. yeah. But we drove from here straight there. Like wow. we didn't stop, so we're not getting hotels or anything. And it's Dang. like in the middle, on the 10, which is like about as close as you can get to the border. Hot as hell in the August. I want to say. Well, I had them drive. Day shift, and I, I took graveyard shift. I was 15, so that's well, okay. they had license. Oh, yeah, everybody that was driving had a light because little Daniel couldn't drive. Oh, I know, yeah, I forgot about that, but anyway. Um, so you're in California, you meet the team manager, yeah, and he's uh, just not feeling it. Or, well, I got back, he was he was feeling it to my face, and I got back and sent him an email, and then he didn't get back to me for like a month. And so, me being a stupid kid. I'm just like, hey, like everything good? He's like, you just need to chill. I was like, <laughs> whoa, all right, all right yeah, man. See, that's, I haven't heard message that, received. But, you know, they, they uh, apparently how, had some team manager issues back in the day. So everybody did, I think. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, that's how that went. So I just gave up on Black Label, and I didn't have a focus at that point either. I was just filming for reason to believe. That's, okay. all, yeah. that's all we give a shit about. So. So you're hanging, you're shooting for reason to believe, and then I guess Peter still <laughs> believed in you. It's like, no, 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 we're, we're going to find you a home. <laughs> I don't know if you believe me. I just was that still annoying kid. Like, I'm just coming around every weekend, and I think I started driving, so I'll just be down in Birmingham all the time. And, yeah, we started filming for that video. I grew like a foot. Or yeah, he literally had to refilm, start refilming <laughs> like halfway through production. Call production, yeah, yeah, whatever. You Dang. know, uh, Dang, we got production, yeah, now, production. Right? big talk. Uh, uh, but yes. yeah, he pretty much, he pretty much looked. He when you edited the footage together, it looked like James, <laughs> two and different people, brother. or something. You know what okay. I mean? Like, oh, he put his little brother in there for like you know support. Like, no, that's James one. And I had, um, I, had, I mean, I still have massive hair, but I let my hair grow out, and I got a nickname called Fluffs, and that stuck for a long time, still to this day. Fluffs, Actually, yeah, I, I, I know of it, but I don't. I don't think he was. Oh, close. shout out Peter. That that was his name for me. He Fluff. called me. He called me the other day. Like, there are worse nicknames. They I mean. are definitely worse nicknames. Oh, I know. At the time, I was just offended, man. I was like, man, I got hair, um, Peter. Um, <laughs> yeah, I almost got Shots branded fired. as the Shots barbarian. Fired. Like, I could see that. That's what. I can, like, yeah. That's what sorry, man. I somebody. Can see that. I can't remember who. You smacking yourself in the head with the board and all that. The Birmingham barbarian or something, and Lucero loved it. People. Oh, sure. Shit. I talk to people all the time out like and. You know, no, I don't mind. They being, still call you that. I don't mind being called that, but I didn't like Lucero had, had made a board and he had put the barbarian on it. <laughs> on the board, yeah. And I was like, I don't want that. Really? Yeah. No, I, was no, like, no, no, no. I was like, I don't want to be a nickname skateboarder forever. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't mind being called train that. wreck. I go, yeah. but when you but you put it on the board, then it's more going to be official. It's going to seal it exactly. I'm yeah. like, you guys can call me that, and you can put it in a caption on a photo or something. But once you put it on a board like that, and I'm like, I don't. You don't want to be the next that. Lizard King or Slash. Or I don't mind it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, they pull it off well. I didn't see myself pulling okay. that. You know what I mean? Fair like, enough, like I, I love those dudes. Oh. Like, it works for them. I got called Yeti, and I had a board graphic that was the Abominable Snowman. Yeah, I have that oh, on my, on my wall. Though. You got that on your wall? I have that one. Holy shit, I never even got that. Pe- board. Yeah, Peter was like, when he came over, he was like, oh, you got the Yeti board? Oh, like, I'm like, I didn't know it was a rare one. <laughs> but yeah, I got it. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Fun nicknames here. So, yeah. so while you're filming for Reason to Believe, was it when you wrapped Reason to Believe that sponsors started to 
notice you or you started to kind of reach out or i mean what was the timeline between reason to believe and real reasons basically what got me kicked off label <laughs> yeah you kicked off label i'll tell you right now it helped yeah. your I'll career tell you right now. Way. it got been kicked off label and it got me on everything so okay at the very end of it i started getting destroyed real. one career and started another one. awesome i, I start riding hardy yeah. flow yeah, yeah right <laughs> I know. That would have been hilarious, full circle. Oh, dude. No. Right, you got any Hardy shoes? Hardy flow, man. But, no, but, the, yeah, but to so, touch on that before we move on, yeah. what was the deal? I was going to say, yeah, like he got screwed over in that situation because they gave him all the footage to put in the video. And then all of a sudden, yeah. at the very end of our video, I remember this like yesterday, they're all like, hey, we're going to start a video. And we were about done with it. And they wanted everything that he was filming for reason to believe. And so... After the video came out, he just basically got the stiff one, and they were like, "Oh, we're done with you." Like, well, it, harsh, man. Damn. Somewhat, yeah. Basically, Lucero was going through a divorce, <clears throat> and he put uh, Salman Aga as their team manager. Well, Salman, like, and I, pre all that happening, had all this footage, and they were talking about doing a new video. And so they all had all this footage, and then they said they weren't going to do a video. Keep filming anyway, then they're going to do a video. And then they decided they're not going to do one. And so they a lot give of me. Back and forth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, well, hey, I've got this other video that my buddy's working on. I'm and pumped it, about it. Yeah, it'll weird. be done in yeah. like probably six months. Let me get that footage so I can put it out. So this footage doesn't get old or, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't want to sit in this stuff for too long. I might gain weight in six months and might look the same or whatever, you know? <laughs> what up? And so they gave me all the footage. And then Solomon Aga becomes team manager or something. And then he calls me. Uh, and this is right after a, a good friend of ours, shout out to Gecko, um, had a bad head injury. But basically, I was at the hospital while he was in the ICU from his head injury. Damn. So I think I would have got kicked off then. But when when he found out where I was and why I was there, he was like, "All right." He was like, "Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll call we'll you talk later, about or whatever." Later, yeah, yeah, and then like maybe like three weeks later, I got we talked, and then I got kicked off. And uh, no reason. He mm -hmm. just said we're making some changes. It was like me. I got kicked off. Rake Straw got kicked off. It was like the whole team change between Blackout and yes. uh, what was it, Back in Black or something? What was the uh, well, no, it was Label Live. Was Label Live. Was okay, like because yeah. we, we did Blackout and there was like a tour video which was Label Live, and then that gets lost on me. Yeah, I forget about yeah, that. And yeah. then we started filming another video, and then it got put on hold. So all that footage went to Reason, and then Salman came in and asked me, "Why are you filming for that video and not our video?" And I'm like, what do you mean our video? And he's like, what the Black video? Label video. I'm like, well, all the footage I have, they gave me because they said we're not doing a Black Label video. And he's like, well, we're doing one now. And I'm like, well, this footage is already edited. Well, You know what I mean? Exactly. I'm like, hey, it was already given to me. I'm already committed to this video well, now. And, and right. the other thing about it that I think Black Label was immature about, Jamie Thomas was in the video supporting the video. It was going to be good for Ben no matter which way it went. Yeah. And it was going to be distributed through Black Box, which it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I remember yep. seeing it like, all over. <laughs> yeah, yeah so to me, it was... Reason it, to believe. Yeah, yeah, about, yeah. yeah, and it was a bullshit move. I just thought, like, Jamie's a part of it. Like, Pat Ragshaw's in yeah, there. Yeah, he had like, a part. And, the, like, the two pieces of shit were me and Peter. You know, we're just... I'm a kid. I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't okay. disagree as well. But not, not Peter. Your part was rad. But anyway, it was just like... It made sense for him to do that at the time, and Jamie was supporting it. So I thought, yeah, I, thought like, I thought that was whack. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, like it, it, he like when Solomon called me, he, he made it sound like I was blowing Black Label off, and I'm yeah. like, dude, Black, I have nothing but love. And Lucero, during the, my entire run there, was always worried that I was going to go to zero. And I'm like, dude, I'm I'm Black Label for life, man. Like, I still like I would rather have stayed on Black Label than ever gotten on zero. You know what I mean? Like that was really wow, dude. I mean. Well, I could see the circa it, it, tie and him, you know, hanging yeah, with Jamie yeah. and the well, we're Alabama from Alabama, yes, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. And he knew I knew Jamie, and I, and I always I lived close to Black Box. I was always there. Yeah, like when I was in San Diego, if I wasn't out street skating, I was at Black Box skating we're, their park. You know what I mean? We, we were roommates one time. Yeah, okay. I mean, once that was that was the the <laughs> second time. the second or yeah. the third Black Box. But we were still roommates. You know, it was pretty tight. Like I, I, okay. everybody that worked there was 
from most of them were from Dothan or something. I yeah. knew everybody that worked there. It wasn't like I was trying to uh, charm my way into riding for zero. I just knew everybody already. Uh, and it was just like going to skate at a with place friends. with my friends, yeah, and they yeah. just happened to work for this other company or whatever. Sure. I can see why he would be ups, like, man, like scared yeah, or whatever, yeah. but like I always try to let them know that like I'm black label. Like, dude, you guys showed me love, and like. And another thing is they were super down to show faith love. Like my first board graphic, they let me put a faith graphic on the top graphic of the board. Really? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I had nothing but love for them. I had no reason to like leave them. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a loyal kind of guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I'm not going to leave them because there's better money over here. If they're showing me love, like I'm going to support them to the end. And I, I hate that it turned out the way it did. You know what I mean? Because... I'm st- I still feel like I'm in the dark on how it all really went how down. shook out. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? I got yeah. some phone calls, and then I try to call people afterwards, and I never got – it's like once I got the news broke to me, was like, almost everybody was like, all right, well, we're done with that. You know, and so I never really got any follow-ups or <coughs> – you know, I, I, I ended up seeing Lucero later on. He's like, you know, I guess everything kind of worked out for the best. You know, me ending up at yeah. zero and stuff. I was like, yeah, well, it didn't have to be that way. Like, I'd rather have stayed at Black Label, but yeah. it is what yeah. it is, you know? Okay. Well, uh, all right. So that's kind of the end of reason to believe for you. Um, yeah. Then the mean, doors start opening for you, man. And, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so, I was, I mean. Like and then so, Fallen comes into the mix and, and all the other, you know, cool sponsors was, and stuff. Well, reasons all is what got me on zero, though. Yeah. Because when Jamie called me, he's like, you don't put out a part like that and quit. Right. And I was like, well, I didn't plan on quitting. I just, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'd hope to still ride for Black Label, but literally the day I got the phone call that I was getting kicked off, I had a job lined up by the end of the day. You know what I mean? Because I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Were you going to still try to pursue skateboarding, or are you just going to I didn't know. Just I, just, do, I was like, well, let me just It'd be something to pay the bills. Yeah, because yeah. I'm like, I have one more check coming in from Black Label, so. Got to do something. I got to yeah. do something, yeah, yeah. so. <clears throat> filled up yeah <laughs> dude so um what was the transition like between like how did zero come into the mix you said jamie called well and, you know and... jamie was involved with reason sure <clears throat> basically joel our, I, who I, did reason i told jamie to put him on just kidding okay well <laughs> that hearty flow kicking in well, yeah. way back in the day <laughs> like when i said i first met joel and he got that first vx 1000 yeah well he went out to california and met, excuse me, what was that street that all the Baker dudes used to live on in San Diego? <laughs> it was, it was, That's your time, not me. No, it actually, this is pre my time. But anyway, Joel filmed a lot of, I think maybe even some of like Eric Ellington's. He first, filmed like Greco Ellington and yeah, all Yeah, like time. their 4 on 1 stuff. So he had ties with Jamie, and Jamie taught him how to film, and Jamie trusted him enough to where he would call him to film when he was out there so for you know fast forward jamie's or joel's now living in atlanta anytime joel or jamie comes through the southeast joel calls joel to come be an extra filmer or if he's coming to atlanta joel has all the spots or whatever so joel would naturally show him the footage he's got that's how i got sponsored yeah and so he showed him this is what Ben's got. This is what James got. Break straw, blah blah. And he he liked the footage, everything so much. We, we the video was pretty much done mm-hmm. when Jamie saw it, mm-hmm. and then Jamie saw it, liked it, and then all right, I'm let me get on board. I'll give you footage for a part, and then we'll help distribute it. And okay. so that's you know. So when he came on, he'd already seen the footage, and then when all the black label shit went down, it wasn't long, maybe like a month. And then he called me up. It was like, "Hey, you're free agent." All yeah, right. yeah, Let's basically. Work yeah. Out, yeah, okay. He's like, "Do you want to be rooms, roommates with James out in San Diego?" And I was like, "Yeah, well, sounds good." Yeah, you want to live in the big <laughs> skate park? Yeah. So while this is happening with you, where are you at on this timeline? Oh, I'm talking about like when just re- career wise and and well, when reason to believe was over, I was graduating high school, and uh, Jamie called me. And was like, hey, do you want to move to Black Box and, like, work in the warehouse? You know, pick and pack, like, easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then it was like, at first it was like, you know, eight hours. And then I would go out 
on the weekends and filming stuff. And uh, eventually he was like, hey, we're going to cut you down to just work till noon. And then after that, if you want to, you can try and go out and film. And I was like, okay, whatever. I was like living on one pack of Cheez-Its. And like, so you do that with like most AMs? Is that like just a thing? Come work at, at, at Black the, Box. And, and at the time, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, shit. It was, they, it was don't even, they don't even work sometimes. They yeah. just come out and, yeah. and like hang out for a sure. few weeks. And come just work. See how, yeah. see how they, uh, you know, vibe Mesh. with the team yeah. or whatever. So and that was kind of Got to get a feel, you know, yeah. get your feet wet. Yeah. So Which is funny is that like, that's basically what we did with James. Yeah, he came. You know what I mean? It's like Kirk Beckman. We we did it the exact same way everybody else does it. Mm-hmm. We didn't know it. You know what I mean? Having him come hang out and yeah, make see, sure he fits the him. flow and yeah, all. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, what's this dude really like? Yeah, he can skate, but yeah. Yeah, so he invited me out. Luckily, I didn't do a Kirk back lip around him, and I didn't hear how Ben reacted yeah. to that. <laughs> okay. Thank God for everybody. Involved. Yeah, thank thank you for saying what you said, and you did, you'll never remember, but I remember anyway. Um, move out there. And I'm roommates with Gilbert Crockett and Drake Jones. Yep, randomly Drake. is yeah. If you don't know, shout out to Drake Jones. Yeah, he classic old school SF legend. And uh, I'm like, I don't even. I think I didn't even know who Drake was. I was just like, oh, what's up, homie? Like, we're just hanging out, roommates. It's like me, Crockett, and Drake Jones all in one room. And then finally, I figured out who Drake was. I was like, what in the world? Crazy. Anyway, so I started working from like I said, just till noon. I would go out and film. And that's when they were, they were already filming for Ride the Sky, mm-hmm. the Fallen video. Yeah. And so eventually I started getting, I think I, I think that what made him take a chance on me, I did this one trick and he was like, Hey, like we want to use that. Do you think you can film a part? And I was like, yeah, I think that he was like, I'll pay you 500 bucks a month. I was like, cheese it's in Chick-fil-A whenever I get a chance. So I was like, yeah, I was like, got that deal. Yeah. And then. I just skated, went out with all the filmers, probably annoyed them as much as I annoyed these guys when I first came around. And, you know, I was like, so You didn't annoy us. That's why you stuck around. That's <laughs> yeah. the thing. It's like, if you noticed, you were out. I've annoyed everybody I've ever been around, so I'll just accept that. That's more a... lately. Oh. No. <laughs> oh. I'm I, it, it's never going to change. Yeah. Some some things never change. But uh, I would just hop in the van and uh, be on any session that had a filmer and – if there was a spot I could skate, you know, like just kind of progressed and then like super hungry skate kid. Yeah. You know sure. I mean, I mean yeah, I would be like, like, dude, I gotta like just prove myself to even be able to hang out with these guys, you know? Yeah. I mean, when you're younger, it's like, you don't even think about it. You're not thinking about the long term. You're thinking right. about, you know, what's going on right now. And so I would get in the van, try and skate, go to LA or go up North and stuff like that. I got invited on some trips. He got me on real so i was like officially on real at this point and then they were taking me on trips so then he was like all right we're gonna bump your pay and you're just gonna like film for this video and i was like okay cool like whatever so i went to like barcelona i went to china and i was at the same time i was still growing like i know he says i grew for a reason to believe but what i looked like in the fallen video was yeah. nothing like i looked in reason to believe so i just it's like your second growth spurt <sighs> i hope i don't have another one <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I was just lucky enough where I think at the time, because of reason to believe and Ben and Peter and everything that came around from here, he was just hyped on me and, uh, just gave me the shot and just took me all over the world and ended up putting me in that video with the most ridiculous skaters. And I don't even believe I belonged in that video at the time <laughs> and uh but it worked out and that was like kind of the start for something for me so it was thinking back on it now it's weird you know like yeah you're just skating every day mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're in this video and you're with Chris Cole and you're with Tommy Sandoval you know and you're with Billy Marks at the time who was killing it you're Jamie Thomas you right. know and thinking back on it now I'm like I don't even think I realized what the hell was going on I was yeah. just skating, so it yeah. Was... You're in the middle of it, so you don't think about it right. as much as what it is until you like. Look right. not, I yeah. never, Whoa. yeah, I never realized that what like what that part would do for me. We but... realized though, we're like, yeah. this guy from Alabama, <laughs> this is so crazy, man. I think when it was wrapping up, I was like, oh shit, I was like, I'm about to be in a video with all these dudes. I was like, I don't know if I want to be because yeah, they were right. just killing it. Yeah, you know? man, and that video was like groundbreaking. Just the way the cinematography the, and the sliders the, and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, to this is day, so like sick. some of the things that I look back that Tommy and like Chris Cole did, I was like, what in the world? Like, and I was around for half of it. And I just would watch it and be like, hmm, cool, good, hell yeah, oh sick, <sighs> yeah, bud. And I, but thinking back, I'm like, that trick is 
fucked up. So right. it was just a wild time for me. And I kind of wish I could, you know, slow it down a little bit, but it was just happening so fast. So fast. Right. I can't yeah. imagine. Well, Fallen has, uh, you know, been resurrected from the dead and, mm -hmm. and um, was watching a video the other day. And <coughs> it was like quarantine with the Fallen team. And, and one of the questions they asked was, who's your favorite Fallen rider, past or present? And I think uh, Chris, Billy, and one other guy were like, James Hardy, you know, his <laughs> name dropped you super hard. I thought that was really rad, man. So you yeah. definitely had an impact on, um, on that I, team. They were, they became good friends, you know, yeah. like once you're around someone for so long, it's yeah. like, it's hard to like cut, you know, like, especially now so you're with traveling cell together and yeah. And, and especially with like cell phones. Like I'm a guy that like tries to reach out to people I really became close to. So I talked to Cole, you know, every mm -hmm. other week I talked to Tommy yesterday you know, I, I haven't talked to Billy in a second, but I talked to Mike Sinclair every day. He's the one that got me on Fallen, or not got me on Fallen, but had to deal with my ass. Because I want to know about Mike Sinclair. What do you want to know? He next. seems like such a rad dude. Dude, he, oh, he really is. His nightclub like, interview was very, like, interesting. Like, like really what cool. are those road trips like with him? <laughs> See, the first, I mean, like, he's just a nut. Like, he's sober dude. Yeah. And eats like shit. <laughs> he yes. definitely eats like shit. <laughs> you know? But then, like, you know, he's got his strong opinions about everything, but the dude is nothing but helpful for me in my life. And, uh, but I just talk shit to him every day. I talked to him this morning. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, but take this, I'm trying to figure out how to get this vaccine. I'm like, <laughs> I'm well, like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I'm not taking it. He's like, man, off it, man, man I got to send you some shit, man. Don't be fucking doing that shit. I'm trying to see you again before I die. And so oh, dude. he seemed like he was like super quarantined. He did a, Oh, he oh, he's quarantine. He, he's yeah. quarantined right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's like uh, he, he came did... and stayed in my house in Irondale. Okay, yeah. Three weeks ago. Oh, and but I happened to be working. But Who my, did? my Sinclair did. Yeah. Thanks but he, but <laughs> he happened to be. Uh, I happened to be working, so I was like, "Hey, my girlfriend's there." I was like, "You can come say what up to her." And he was like, "No, no, no." He's like, "Twenty yards." And I was like, "All right." Yards. And so I asked my girlfriend like the next morning because he just slept there in his van in my backyard. Yeah. Didn't come in my house. Didn't even piss do anything in my house. And then I asked my girlfriend like the next day. I was like, "Did you, did you meet Mike?" She was like, "Well, he like yelled at me from twenty yards away." <laughs> twenty like, yards. I thought oh, it was, he's like, he's six feet. Like, he's crazy about it. Yeah. So. Well, he did an interview with the Nine Club, and he talked about trying to race home during the <laughs> pandemic. And he was like hitting people up on places to stay. Mm -hmm. He was like, "Yeah, you can stay in my bedroom." He's like, "No, I'll sleep in the driveway." He's That's like, what he did. I'll be gone before morning. I was like, "Dude, that guy." He oh, seems uh, so rad though. Oh, he's the, he's the best. He I, the I, best. I just give him shit just because he's my favorite friend to fuck with. So okay. he's just he's just a dork. So right. just, so he was the team manager. Is that what you said? Yeah. So at the time before he started eating Del Taco every day, he was <laughs> uh, he looked like you guys. You know, I was like, oh hell yeah, this is my team manager, whatever. And we did a trip to Miami, <laughs> and I remember on that trip to Miami. We went and skated this uh, rail at a hospital in Hialeah. It's like a little suburb, kind of like how Irondale would be to Birmingham. Sure. Okay. It's called Hialeah. And uh, this uh, security car comes up, and they're like, you need to get out of here. He's like, all right, I'm getting out of here. Like, what the fuck? We'll, I'll wrap everybody up, and we'll get the hell out of here. He's like, you know what? And he just lost his shit on Mike. And it was like, get out of the car right now. And, Mike's like, I, and Mike was all, I ain't getting out the car. <laughs> And he's like, get out the car. He's like, I ain't getting out the car. And so Mike just rolled up the window. And, like, we all were in the van already. And so we go literally, I'm not even, like, three lights down the road. 20, like, cop cars roll up. It's like me, Josh, Chris Cole, Josh Harmony, Chris Cole, Tony Cervantes, Jamie's in the van too. And, like, they pull everybody out. They sit us uh, on the grass and they just pull Mike out immediately, arrest him, take him to jail. He goes to jail for a night. Damn. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yeah, so I always just remember that. I'm like, you idiot. I was like, you should just talk to the dude. He's like, I wasn't going to the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Man. He's the best. Like I said, I talk to him almost every day at this point because we just keep giving each other shit yeah. about the vaccine thing. I tell him, I'm like, I'm not going to take it. He's like, Man, I gotta send you some more shit, man. There's 240,000 people in the world that's already took it. Um, he's just <laughs> free, freaking out on me. I, I just give him shit just because he's fun to fuck with. Yeah. So that's hilarious. Dude, that's so cool. He's the best. I mean, he's done so much for so many people's careers, including mine. You know, continues to do it when he can and help me out. If uh, if I ever need a favor, I know I could call Mike. So yeah, shout out Mo Mike. Yeah, Mike Sinclair, love you. He's awesome. the best. Dude, that's rad. So. <clears throat> Skateboarding is uh, certainly 
not the easiest sport to kind of break into. So coming from Alabama. I was going to say, especially around Birmingham. Man, yeah, in a state that – yeah, I'll take one, sure. Appreciate um, it. Coming from Alabama, uh, how do you think – just skating here where we don't have a skate park on every corner. Um, just I'll take that was well, yeah, I don't want to cheer I want to drink his drinks. That was um, that was my draw to Faith was like Ben Gillies from Alabama. Yeah, I, dude. I and I that. think for like so many, you know, growing up, mm-hmm. I got my first skateboard when I was twelve and I think that's around the time Label Kills was coming out, maybe a yeah. year after and just the influence is like, holy shit, this dude is from here where I live on a dirt road mm-hmm. and I've got nothing and I want to do skateboarding and I'm fucking hated on constantly and teased in high school and everything oh yeah same here and like, i'm like this dude made it you and, know? well and that was my draw to faith I was yeah like, i was like you know i'd seen label kills had been out yeah or, yeah it had been out and the faith video once i saw it i was like this dude's from alabama i was like what the fuck i'm sorry i'm not trying to suck your dick but um but i was like this dude's from alabama i was like yeah okay later but <laughs> i was like i was like dude i was like this is rad i was like i've never heard of this you know the whole time I grew up in Huntsville. And yeah. So that was kind of my draw to faith. I was just like, dude, I was like, and he's like, once I met him and, you know, sorry. Just oh, we're all fanning out. Here. All right. Yeah. I mean, just having both yeah. of you guys here. So. Yeah. He's never heard this fan side of it. But yeah, I was just like, damn, I was like, this is cool. And then I met Peter. Peter's like other two dads here, one here. And then Peter was on the last one. So yeah. I was just like, dude, these dudes are sick. And like, they know what's up and they're cool people. And it was just like a cool vibe. And Birmingham, as a city is awesome so yeah um yeah it was just like the draw to it was like crazy to me when like label kills and i saw faith skate supply video 2000 i think that's what it's called anyway. yeah but yeah oh i wore that vhs out man just on repeat it's crazy i know the fact I, that you said I'm, vhs vhs so dude odd. that's what it was like yeah but, man hey cal hudson you better be taking care of that one i gave you so <laughs> i gave him i know i gotta get cal copy. on here man i love that dude i, I feel like we talk about him all the time yeah he's the man but yeah, so you know, getting involved with faith and 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 then obviously making a career in, in a sport like this, coming from the south, how do you think you know growing up on, <clears throat> coming from the south originally from Mississippi and stuff, yeah. influenced your skating in a world you know dominated by the West Coast at least at the time it seemed like. You don't give just, a fuck. Well, dude, I, <laughs> or I didn't know anything about it. I just knew the older kids introduced me to skateboarding, but in Mississippi, I couldn't go buy a thrasher on the newsstand right you know what i mean like i I didn't have so i'd get a catalog and i would stare at that catalog for like two months and go through just to say just just you know every page i know every page and half the stuff i'll never see in my life but i know (laughs) what that shirt's like with that graphic because we had nothing skateboarding so i would absorb anything i could and I would just mimic. And actually, it ended up being like a hindrance when I first moved to Birmingham. It's because in Mississippi, you'd be doing tricks and you see somebody try something. I'd never thought of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll try that. And then you move here, people's egos get involved sure, and they think yeah. you're trying to show them up. And I was just like, no, I just, I never thought of that. That was a, you know what I mean? And right. like, so you, I guess you call it skate etiquette. Sure, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I had to learn some dudes shit like working that. on this kick pick back tail. Yeah. You don't, you don't like. Oh, I got that oh, trick. I, yeah, That's exactly. In my bag. And yeah. like, oh yeah, you see somebody trying to one eighty gap or something, and you go, oh, I can do that. Boom. You try right behind them. <laughs> I didn't look at it as like I'm showing them up. Sure. That's how we did it. It was like, oh, you tried that, and we'd all start trying it together, or okay. you know what I mean? See what we could do, and like coming here. That's not how it went. No, like, yeah. no, I'm trying that trick. You try to show me up, dude. I'm like, right. No, I'm just a dumb kid from Mississippi. Well, it seems <laughs> like shit. you know all the you know Jamie and you guys and 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 people from the South. It's like you know, and even going to like you know the Cut Cliffs and, and yeah. the people in Reason and stuff. It was always like big gaps, big rails, you know, big tricks, going super fast, you know, yeah. versus like real tech or stuff you would see like maybe in a contest or something. You could thank him and Jamie for that. Well, so. but then, you, but you said cut cliffs. <laughs> Riley was one of the techest dudes I've been around, uh-huh. like in person. Okay, yeah. you know, I mean, <clears throat> he could do you know, anything, dude. He, yes, you know, he's one of those dudes. You know, I think if skateboarding comes too easily to you you almost don't appreciate it as much as okay. like you know i have i have to work for you tricks. have to work for it you know yeah. what i mean so i appreciate it more because i have to put work into it and killed almost, myself yes, to get this and, five and, or and yeah. riley almost feels was not that at all mm-hmm. 
he he could work all day, get in a have a pair of boots on, like <laughs> you know, do a switch one eighty to like switch nose man, or you know, just do some shit yeah. and then like revert out and like that was just his shit. Yeah. He didn't skate fast. He was very very tech. He didn't have to. But, he was too comfortable on a board. Yeah. He would just do shit that like none of us were fucking doing. He was an yeah. yeah, I guess I guess to to your point, he was an anomaly to mm. this area, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But I think because out here your spots are a little rougher. Sure. So you're doing more of a session on a spot doing one trick. You know what I mean? Unless you go to like a Lynn Park where you can session or whatever. Yeah, but right, right. Even that's yeah. even that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not the it's a great plaza, but it's not like the smoothest. Oh sure, yeah. Even By we knew that. Right yeah, at the time. I'm sure you guys are scared of there. But yeah. I, I think honestly, like anything, it's like you don't know what's possible till you see it. Right. You know what I mean? And then that you just you start you, know, you start mimicking higher. it yourself. And like I said, you see stuff and people doing stuff, and then you're learning stuff on your own, and then you get to something, and you're like, I think I can do this. Right. Even though you've never skated something that big or whatever, and I honestly, they, that's really what it what it was is just what was around us here you know what i mean yeah like it's it's pretty rough you know i because when i went that giant rail i was went from a 10 stair to like a 22 or 22. whatever you know what i mean it was yeah. like i had to go practice on a 10 stair there wasn't really much later on we found rails that were in between but mm-hmm. you know we didn't know them at the time so yep yeah yeah it's that's, yeah, I don't know. I don't you. know what draws us to it. You know, it's just uh, mainly for me. It was just like I would look at something. I'm like, I think I can do that. Yeah. And I, I, I couldn't let that <clears throat> question just sit. I had to like, either right. try it and not do it, right. or make Gotta it. Know it. for sure. Exactly. And then once you make that, then you're like, oh, I can go. I can do that. This one's and only then, like three or four feet bigger. Yeah, like, why exactly. Not? It's only like I mean? five more yeah. stairs. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Only exactly. Only if you five. say that out loud, it's only five more stairs. You're like so five's only this many. <laughs> Well, yeah, so uh, it'd be cool to hear about, um, obviously, uh, label didn't work out and things kind of changed, and yeah. you're just kind of, you know, hanging out and doing your own thing. Doing landscaping. Faith and, doing he's, landscaping. He's on James Hardy Flow. Yeah. But on James Hardy, 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 Hardy Flow. Flo. We already talked about that. Um, yeah, I got I hung up the phone from someone, a guy. Dude, we were roommates. And, it was so fun. Yeah, and then I called this lady I knew that <laughs> we were did landscaping. It was tight. And like, would, would hire... She'd come to the shop and get skateboarders to come help her. Okay. And so I was like, hey, because uh, I was like, all right, well, that's quick, easy money under the table. I can at least do that until I figure something out. And so I, I can work her up. a shovel. Yeah. Exactly. And so, like, literally, I called her. I got off the phone with Sam and I called her up. And she goes, yeah, that would be great. Or whatever. Okay. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I think. I think I might have got kicked off on a Friday. So it was like, I got the weekend off <laughs> in between <laughs> skateboarding and like, landscaping. And then I did that for a while. And, and so how did Zero come into the picture? Uh, basically, got off work at home, brushing off all the grass off my pants or whatever. And Jamie called me and basically said, what are you doing right now? And I'm like, I'm like getting out of my work clothes he's like no no like what are you doing like with skateboarding or whatever and i'm like what do you mean i got kicked off label he's like or are you not trying to get sponsored by anybody and i'm like no i don't know i mean i got kicked <laughs> off you know what just i mean over I'm like, it. yeah, yeah I, well like, yeah. I'm, I'm not like I, i'm not good at whoring myself out you sure. know what i mean and that was part of the problem i guess you could say with me being in skateboarding anyway i i hate to do in interviews i don't want to well, you know what i mean for, like uh, yeah, yeah. no i mean no, shit, no yeah. i i do i i'm very awkward um i'm socially awkward okay. you know um and so i was very i'm always uncomfortable with it um i guess later in life i found out it's called like imposter syndrome or whatever like i've always felt like okay. like i was fake like and maybe you didn't and deserve and every, the yes, accolades and every, everybody was gonna okay. become aware like oh wait you're not supposed to be here you know what i mean and and that's okay. how i always felt so when i got kicked off i was like all right well you know, I have a fun story after this. You know what I mean? And then Jamie called me, and I was just like, well, "All right, I'll I'll get on. I'll try to get on zero. So he just offered you a spot on the team he, yeah, right he away. Basically, yeah, call and said we're we're trying to do this new thing. We're gonna try to get uh, you know m- more riders like me and Alyssa Steamer. And he's like, basically, you you're gonna be able to get out of it what you put into it. You know what I mean? If you film parts <laughs> and you're in the magazine and stuff, then you'll do well or whatever. And uh, shortly after that, um, 
Joe Brook was coming through town with the real team. They were on a trip, and he called me up and found out I'd just gotten on zero. <clears throat> and he's like, well, hey, this trip ends in Birmingham. If I just extend my ticket and stay a week with you, do you want to do, like, an article or something? And I was like, yeah. And so, so what magazine is this? Slap. Slap. This is, okay. slap. This is right before. That was my first it, photo in a magazine. It went to Ooh. um, Ooh, man, digital, I guess. That was my first photo in a magazine. Was it? Yeah. And that, Wait, and, that trip? And your article. Ben Gilliam Friends and Slap. Was that that article? Yeah. It yeah. Okay. Had that uh, grind. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. And that's that. Yeah. That's kind of how. That almost solidified it, as far as like he he said that like you can get on the team or whatever, and then Brooke heard about it. It was like, hey, me and Brooke always had a great relationship. He loved me. I loved him. He's the man. And Brooke and is the manager. Joe Brooke. No, no, he's the he was like the main photographer at Slap. That's Slap. Okay, and then gotcha. now he's transitioned to like a Thrasher <laughs> photographer. Okay. okay. And so. So he was coming through, and so he was like, "I heard you just got on zero. I'll extend my ticket. Let's shoot a, let's do an article or whatever." And so, I busted my ass like doing landscaping during the day, and then in the afternoon, I would go shoot photos and skate with him. Dude. And I got a an article out of it, and and then once I did that, then I was able to like move out west because it was like, "Hey, I you know if I'm, I'm gonna do this, let's do this." You know what yeah. I mean? So. Yeah. So you started hanging out at Black Box and, and Well, yeah, skating. once I got that article and, yeah. I, I got a funny story. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, jump on in. So no one knew about Gilly, per se, at zero. So I remember, I mean, you became good friends with Tommy. Oh, yeah. What, oh, what yeah. time frame is this? Is this New Blood? This era? is like is this pre-New Blood. Blood. Pre-New Blood. Pre-New Blood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was it? Yeah, I guess it was. I, I, I don't know. I remember I had all their numbers. I remember. I don't think. It, I don't think it was before. This is know. after dying to live, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way, after way, dying to live. Way, way after. after. Way after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's so a anyway, Maybe it was post new. He gets on know. zero, and I was on fallen, and we moved in together at the warehouse there. And so you're basically living at the warehouse. No, we, yeah. we, we lived in the same room. Yeah, like okay. this would be my bed. And yeah. My Walk bed. downstairs. You're at work. Yeah, it was almost like <laughs> a hostel. Was it was like a hostel. You know what I mean? Yeah, Three, yeah, yeah. four beds in one room. But, and, yeah, yeah, sweatshop going hostel. on. Yeah. Skateboarders. So, Basically, but yeah. I, I have been traveling with Fallen just a hair. You know, enough to like talk to everybody. And sure. Fa- like Tommy rode for Fallen N Zero, and uh, I remember <laughs> on a trip with Tommy. And this is when he got on zero. He's like, dude, I can't believe Gilly's on zero. He's like, he's one of us. He pulled up to the spot the other day, pumping three six mafia. Like, <laughs> and like I was like, that's Gilly. <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember that? that? No. Uh-uh. Yeah, you pulled up in the you pulled up in the company van, and you were just blaring it. Three six mafia. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's 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 from this area. And there was other th- <laughs> South, baby. There was other that's things right. going on that day, South. but it was yeah, it was hilarious. So. Anyway, they they loved you. They were sh- sh- fucking shook when you were on the team. Well, trust me, I was psyched. I didn't expect to get that phone call. So you're out west. You guys are roomies. You're doing the zero thing. Um, yep. He's, he's working. I'm taking care of Isa. I wasn't working there yet. That was, that At some was, point that, that happened. Later. How long were your roommates? Like a year? At least. Yeah. yeah, two years, something like that. But are you guys going out and skating together? I mean, like we tried, but try, yeah. I mean, that obviously, was different. Part of the like, <clears throat> problem with me being at Black Box, yeah, was my ability to film. Okay, they yeah. they had him working crazy hours. So for me, I was just living there for free. Ben was living there and having to work. You know, they were so they're know. not making you pack boxes or doing anything. Like I mean, that. I did it, but as soon as I got like on, well, I didn't have to. Okay. But if I did, if if I wanted to live outside of the skate park or the hostel, which I definitely did want to live outside Me of that, too. you know what I mean? Like you had to. That was free. obviously it's expensive, but it's to, it's free. To it's crazy treated expensive. like it's free. Yeah, 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 it's right. not theirs, so it's trashed. You right. know what I mean? It fucking stinks. Oh, it stinks so bad. Yeah, you're sharing, you know what I mean. You share in one shower. Yeah, between so, like oh, man. what. At one point, nobody tells you about that. You're like, I live at Black Box. It's so awesome. I'm surrounded by skateboarders. I mean, it is fun. No, it is. Yes. I mean, it's perfectly set up for skate rats. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, yeah. Gets old. It gets, yes. Well, once you get older, maybe it does get old. I was pretty over it the whole time. I'm sure he was over it, but we were roommates, so it worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't that unenjoyable. And basically in the adult room. 
<laughs> yeah, there's two rooms. There's two rooms. And we the were adult in the table adult and the kids' room. table. There's the adult yeah, room that yeah. we had keys to. Yeah, yeah. Like, we were like, ain't door. nobody coming in yeah. here. Yeah. So, well, sure. Oh, uh, we had the fear of God to anybody else that didn't live in that room. Sure. Like, you, you come get, in this room, you you're go. gonna get fucked up. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think this is our li- like this is our home. Yeah, I think set up th- that's your little yeah. party area, where, and you happen <laughs> to sleep whatever bed you fall onto. This is our house right don't fucking touch it my domain <laughs> yes exactly yeah. right. and when he moved in it was like immaculate it was like everything was clean and i was like hell yeah yeah i'm a little yeah. OCD, I'm yeah. A little this is OCD, awesome yeah so. yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so. southern charm so. yeah. those, those, those yeah. are the gold those are the golden years of living there but before that it was whew, you didn't know where you were sleeping that night as far as like bunks and who's all coming in and you know I think everybody invited everybody to stay at all times oh, yeah, of the yeah. night. I, mean, and there was I was about to say, man, there. what's the lifestyle <laughs> of, of of skateboarding in that era? Is it just like it sounds like it's just wild? Non-stop. I mean, there's, there's a pool table up front. There was a little book that had every rule for every game of pool you could think of. So if you just wanted to play some so random non-stop game, pool. you could like go through the book. Okay. Like, all right, let's play these rules. There's Connect Four, um, the two rooms. But where everybody slept, there's a bathroom, and then there was a skate park. You the, know what I mean? Like the thing that drove me crazy was like you'd be trying to sleep at two in the morning, and oh yeah, it's uninsulated walls. Literally, if you walk like ten feet that way and up a stair set, you're in this huge skate park. So you so can, people are skating the park and you're all night. Oh, go to sleep. And Fucking you, blaring music. You know, they, Black you Sabbath in your, yes. at like three in the morning. Yes. You're like, I've heard this song Damn and it. I've seen like yeah. just what, what was what there could, anybody that was the worst? It's like, oh, Tommy's doing a session. Like fucking goddamn, you know, or I don't know. Uh, Throw him under the bus. Any one maybe person? not. Yeah. Or maybe it was would, just I a collective say, party. Yes, atmosphere. It was. It was more of was the just, randoms that would somehow get their little grimy paws in those doors. Oh yeah, it's like dude, I'm here. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, like, that's the thing is, like, that place had so many employees and so many friends of employees that, like, like and, are and you supposed to be here? Are you not supposed to be here? And like, then it's, yeah. homies would fly out and be like, I'm going to come stay at Black Box Park. So, and then, you know, I don't blame them. You know, you're trying to party for a week. You're in San Diego. You know, you're skating at the Black Box Park. And, sure. you know, like, it's a free vacation, park. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. vacation. So, that was just, like, one of the things where you're like, damn it, like, there's, you don't I'm want to gonna, live in the party house. It's right, not, it's right, not right, that, but it's really, like you yeah. don't want to ruin a dude's like trip. Yeah, to you don't want to come out there and be the asshole. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm trying to sleep. Which I, sense. which I did many a time. Oh, really? Yeah, one hundred percent. But I mean, everybody there has to understand. Like, if there's a video deadline coming up, sure, it's like you yeah, know what I mean. Like, I've been busting my ass on this trick I have yet to get, and I'm trying to get some sleep so I can try again tomorrow. Like, th- or besides that, yeah. like he would have to go to work in the morning, and he had to yeah. hear that shit all night. Oh, Damn. dude, I can't imagine. That'd be so yeah. rough. That's crazy. Yeah, and or even when I was working in the warehouse, same thing for me. It was like, dude, I'm trying to go to work in the morning and have enough energy to skate after I get off, stuff like that. So there was times where I probably acted a fool. Sorry to anybody that probably watches this if they do, but yeah. All twenty yeah. people that watch this. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Um, so <laughs> we're better than that, Alex. Yeah. Come on. When how how long was your time at Black Box when you moved out there? Doing that, being on zero, filming. I don't know, honestly. I think it was a couple like, years, yeah, maybe. Was cool. A couple of years. years. Okay, cool. I think it was like three, four? yeah, something like that. Yeah. Because we, like but said, it, we but were roommates for a while. That's long part time. of why I quit. Is that like I just started. Picking and packing. <clears throat> and then the shipper quit. And so the shipper's assistant became the shipper. And then I apparently was the more qualified person to help be his assistant. Okay. It just all falls Yeah, and then so I started helping him, and then he quit. So then I became the shipper. Right. And then... So now you're the dude with the most experience, and you're yes, basically you know running what I mean? black and like now, right. now, I'm, now I'm a shipping manager in the right. warehouse, and I'm like, I'm supposed to also have a pro board and go on these trips. Yeah. And, yeah, J- you know, Jamie would come and tell me, like, we're, at, we're doing this new graphic series. It's going to be, like, you know, this theme. Like, one right, was, right. Like, it was like, something, it was like something where, like, something was broken. Like, uh, somebody had, like, a broken beer bottle somebody had like a broken cigarette or you know what i mean so i would yeah. just they like give me ideas of this or whatever and so they would tell me this and like we because i already i had this board actually yeah was 
that board was the only board that got reprinted over and over. And every other board got discontinued except that one. Mm. And they would tell me a new board was coming in, and it never it never would. Mm. And then, it, oh, we got this trip we're going on next week or, or in three weeks, blah, blah, blah. And then I wouldn't go on the trip. I would just be in the warehouse. And right. so I would be like, hey, why didn't I go on that trip? What, what happened to this board grab? And so I uh, gradually became more of a warehouse guy than – but they were still selling this board like hotcakes. And yeah. all the salespeople would come to me and be like, dude, they try to keep discontinuing this board, but like, we can't we, keep it we, on we, the we shelves. Keep selling yeah. them. And we're like, no, keep, you know what I mean? And so I'm like, I was confused because I'm getting one story from the sales team. And then right. I'm supposed to have these board graphics that never come out. I'm supposed to go on these trips. I never go on. Like, now, obviously, you're doing some filming, some stuff that ended up in Strange World. Um, mm, I mean, yeah, that, but. <sighs> Again, like I had to like pretty much fight for those filming times. Yeah, right. okay. And the and the way they had the filming set up there when I got there was super jacked because they okay. had Matt Winterberg who was the dude, the man, the but, dude. But but right. but this is after when I move out of this is after the promo video came out with the the menu screen is the van on fire. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, from that incident, Winterberg was not allowed to drive anymore. Okay. Even though, like, he was driving when that van caught on fire, it didn't catch on fire because of him driving. Sure. You know what I mean? But, but for, yeah, but yeah. I guess semantics, he got, you this know, your fault. banned from driving. Yeah. So if I wanted to go film, I had to go use one of the black box vans. And if I'm using a black box van, I have to take whoever's staying in the park to go skate. Well, no, that's you. But it's also some random Canadian flow kid that nobody knows who's uh, a fucking yeah. pain in the ass. But <laughs> so you don't know some... it. You don't know it till you take him out on the session. You know what I mean? Right. So I take somebody in the session. I've got three or four randoms with me. I go to skate my spot that I want to go film at. That I'm. That's the whole point. I'm getting the van in. We get kicked out. And so, all right, we'll go somewhere else for a little bit. But then we end up getting stuck. And somebody else trying to trick almost for the rest of the day. And and then so I had this other dude, Austin Booyah. His last name Booyah was his last name spelled backwards. He's tough. I remember. I don't think so. But um <laughs> Okay. I would go film with him. All right. I wanna, and, I wanna, uh, I wanna, I wanna J- know this. Jamie wouldn't accept his footage. Really? Yeah. So like he had was it Ian? Mm-hmm. It was Ian from Philly. In, in beer. Yeah. Um, and he would only film you if you were from Philly, basically. Like, okay. if you weren't, like, Tom Asta, Chris Cole, or, or or surrounding entourage, he basically did not want to point a camera at you. So uh, you're there sessioning the spot with these guys. But no, 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 not, no. Just uh, to get him just to, to get leave the building was impossible. Hard. Oh, okay. And yeah. then Gilbert Crockett, who was a – I'm sorry, no, Gilbert – you can say whatever you gotta say. I don't no, care. no, not, no, no, Cro- Crockett. That's I'm talking about the filmer Gilbert. Uh, oh, Mike Gilbert. Mike Gilbert. He basically was relegated to editing Jamie's YouTube videos and commercials. Mm-hmm. He was a great filmer, but he wasn't. He basically couldn't he's leave the building up. because he's tied up with that. You can't go film with Ian because if you're not from Philly or whatever, he's not gonna go want to really do anything, have anything to do with you. He filmed with me. I know, but he also tried to talk you out of tricks. Whoa, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you, you, like, let's come get this back. Uh, let's come back next week or something. You know what I mean? As opposed to like two tries, he's like, ah, it's over. Yeah, let's he's go. like, ah, yeah, I'm. I'm you get it. Ne- you yeah. get it tomorrow. Don't worry about. It. And then uh, fair, Mike, Mike Gilbert, you, you, you could. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike, Mike Winterberg. You couldn't. Matt. He couldn't drive. Yeah, I'm, I'm brain farting. You, you couldn't drive. Trying to block. Or he couldn't out. drive. You know what I mean? So you had to take him. Well, what's so fucked up is when all this went down, I went, I took Booyah through the warehouse, let him get a big box, and I paid him for the footage he had filmed while we were together because I didn't want it in the Zero video. Mm-hmm. And when I leave, Jamie hires him out of, as a filmer. So the guy I wasn't allowed to use the film is now a black box filmer. And then a, some clip he filmed of me ended up in the latest Zero video. 
So that you I didn't paid, want that. Footage. I did not want it in that. Really? Thing. Yeah. Wow. I was like, I don't want to be in the, any zero anymore. So you I'm were like, over it at that point. I was point. over it. And, and then you and had then a couple of in there. And I was, I called them up. And I'm like, thanks for putting that video in there that I paid you not to put in there. That was fucking Whoa. lame. Oh, that's the footage from Strange World? Yeah. It's, uh, no, not Strange World. What was that latest video? I don't know. It's just a no slide. It's that mailbox. Remember that was on the side of the wall? Mm-hmm. Was it? Wow. it I, I think lose, it was a Cold War. I think it was Strange World. No, Strange World was the one. You had the 50 had at the parts. end where you're jumping into the bush. And no, it was Cold War. It was Cold, Cold War. War. It was Cold War. You had a couple of tricks one. in yes. that one. And, and you did not want I didn't want them in there because I was like, I, I'm, a, I'm wow. done. You know what I mean? Like, I think we had back-to-back tricks. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I did not that. know that. That's, but yeah, it was just, just the way it was set up. It was set up to not work for me. Mm. And then when I left, everything I was trying to do got put into place. <laughs> and it was like, it was almost yeah. like, well, dude, I was trying Right. to do this and you basically weren't like letting me do what i was trying to do and then when i left you you hired the people that you wouldn't let me film with it was mm. it, you know it was ve- it was very weird the way it all went down it was very similar to the way black box felt where like or i'm sorry black label where it just made no sense yeah so i just left i was like i think i'll just I mention just, yeah the skateboarding they'll just chew you up and spit you out you know I, I kind of see that. They uh, they just you know it's like it's like oh we're done with you yeah yeah I mean if you matter the time like they'll sure. take care of you and then when time's up it's time's up quick hey good run yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean it's just time's up quick yeah. and it's a young man's game I sure. mean besides unless you're like a legend you know which or someone that can just continue to like oh, I just want to see him push or whatever this yeah right exactly now, like, yeah and so for just like, watch him skate a flat bar yeah you know? like yeah. for us it's like you know windows short. So, but there are people that can, you know, make it last a long time, but skateboarding can be a son of a bitch as far as like the industry. Yeah. But you have to care and want, you know what I mean? Like if I really cared, I could have started an Instagram and like, I started one and it still didn't matter. Yeah. No, that's that's what I'm saying. Like it doesn't matter to me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, it's just, it's, it's just, it's a, it's an oddball game. Like you think it's one way. Like if you're just good, you know, you're going to make it and you're going to be the next, whatever uh andrew reynolds you know jamie thomas and stuff like that but nowadays it's definitely harder too it's like I was we, about we, to... we've got a guy from here his name's alex spinosi yeah he might be the best skater i've ever been around and as peter said the same thing oh, he's, he's like this kid is killing it he like, might be hands he, down he might be the best skater i've ever seen definitely the best from alabama 100 yeah, percent. and easily. you're never gonna see his name on a board because companies are just all about like clout right you know and like what can i get behind to kind of support you you know like and it's just it's a weird time i don't know what they look for and i don't know why it is like that you know and i feel bad for alec and also shout out to jacob hayes he's the the other best skater from alabama that he's shreds yeah and those kids Mm -hmm. you'll never ever hear about them being on a company and i think that's bullshit but it's also it's a business at the end of the day that's what i always had to tell myself skateboarding has also changed so much between like faith faith isn't just like a business like they care about the community you know we're all local here you know like we do whatever we can to help peter out you know move forward you know keep the thing going you know or anybody here you know i try and help out alec if i can if if i could help out jacob i would if i could help out anybody that's trying to make it out of here we would but skateboarding just changed it's not how it used to be so but that was that was going to be one of my questions you know skateboarding has changed dramatically just the era of social media and you've got kids just it's like we were talking about earlier during the break like can't even keep up with like yeah. current skating and what's going on it's like there's new kids every day and there's a million new thrasher videos every day and yeah if there was any advice that you could offer to some, like the next Alex Spinosi or somebody who's like really has talent and is trying to, you know, my has not like thinks they can make a career right. in skateboarding. Like what would you say to them? Or, my advice would be to anybody that's going to give you any kind of shine on any kind of platform. Just take it at the moment because you could use that platform to get onto something else, which sounds lame. Cause me and him are loyal. Like I've only ever written for real. He only wanted to ride for Black Label, and so, but now it's a whole different ball game. You know, really? it's like it's like transfer portal. You know, and college football. Like you start to you know want to care about this company, but if they're not going to give you the shine that you think you need, or maybe just like 
how good you are. Like, I'm going to go back to Alec. I think Alec should be pro for something, but he's on flow for real. And they're so stacked, and they have so many people to, like, pay attention to. They're never going to put them on the team. And so I would say to those people, take whatever you can get at this point. Right. Enjoy the ride. You know, whatever, because, like I said, it's – Choose you it's a short and, window, yeah. <laughs> choose you up and spits you out. So if you get an opportunity to go on a trip with some company that some people might think is, you know, I mean, there's companies I think are whack, but if someone offers you an opportunity to get out and go see some stuff, you know, pay you a little bit of dollars here and there, enjoy that because you're not going to get it again. And that's something that I always take from skating. Like, I was lucky enough when I was riding for Fallen, I got to travel everywhere and go overseas and everything, and that was, that was a lucky time. Yeah. And I want, like, Alec, I want him to have a good time, and I want him to see some shit, you know? So to that, I would just say it's a different time. It's not like it used to be. And mm. take your opportunities where they are, you know? Look for them, too, you know? So. Well, I know the era of, like, full-length. We talked about that with Peter a little bit. Full-length videos, you know, stuff I grew up on. That's Done. over, you know? It's just mm, like. I don't think it's over. Done. Maybe not. I, no, I, I, think it's, I think it's. Done. I think Instagram and all that has been been to the forefront you know it's in everybody's face but i've never had any interest in any of that okay like none of that has any interest in me i still like watching a video it's like listening to a an album sure like they put the album in order songs in order for a reason you know what i mean I feel the same way about skate videos. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would rather see a, a whole skate see video the of, picture, of the team and, the and what thing. they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want, like, on that trip, yeah, Jamie made me an, uh, that one trip we went on to the desert. He, he made me an Instagram. I think that was the point of me telling that story. Oh, when, you when, when, when I got done, he's like, hey, I made you an Instagram. This is your username. This is your password. Welcome to the 21st century. And, when, and, when, and then when I went to it, he had three photos of me skating. And I'm like, all right, I would never post a photo of me skating. Because, right. like, I'm horror. I'm like, I'm not I'm not a self-horror. You know and, what I mean? Until your paycheck depends on it. Because I, I was a victim of that. I had to do that, too. Yeah, really? But, okay. Yeah, but I will say your Instagram was actually dope because yours was always just you and Vader in the woods. You weren't actually, like... Yeah, you got really into like travel and like Dude, living was, in your van yeah. and stuff. It's cool. It's but really, you weren't, you, but you weren't doing like selfies in front of like right. fucking like right. national yeah, yeah. monuments Self and stuff. Self promo. Well, yes, it, it right, was right. more of. I it just, actually it seemed more of like this is my life. what you're actually doing. Right. Yeah. You know, know what I mean? Like, I'm, I might have done a selfie with like an elk one time. Yes, but but I think Leo's point, account's really cool. Like wait, kind yeah. of the way he presents himself and stuff. Yeah. But it did get to a point where it's like you need to post this, you need to post even like really? that after oh. I, was, I wasn't even getting paid. Yeah, they're like, hey, well, you? I think that's the stuff you don't see. You well, know. I think Peter, you know, I keep talking. So about I, here. I used to have a different Instagram and I deleted it. And don't you dare mention my Instagram on this podcast. But Will not do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, I used to have a different one and it had so many followers. And you know, I I post what I feel sometimes, or sometimes it's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. And you'll get. You know, you just can't be yourself when sure. you're having an expectation. Right. And yeah, like I talked to another guy, I'm not going to name him, but he rides for America and he rides for another company that I respect. And he called me two nights ago and he's like, they're sweating me about like me posting how I feel about the state of like the world and stuff, you know, and politics like, and, and stuff. Like yeah. That. It's yeah. like, you can't really be yourself. You're just, you're just, no, like, no, you need to make the company look good. Yeah. Or, you're just, you're or just whatever. Yeah. And you can't be yourself, which in that self is shitty to me because what, like, for instance, why Ben to me was such a, big figure was because ben was just grinding big ass shit hitting his head with his board you know like <laughs> yeah. you know looking like a crazy ass and that Sorry was character that. right yeah so. yeah but now it's like you're just this we're trying to sell our product you gotta abide by these lines back then it was like ben could bash his head as hard as he fucking wanted with a board and yeah. it was like that's ben like that's cool that's why people got into that and so yeah. it's very uh watered down in my yeah. opinion at this point it's just so. crazy because you know average mm -hmm. joe's we don't see that side of you know and i try and keep in social media yeah i try and yeah. keep in touch with like a lot of sponsorships and stuff like a lot of my old teammates and mm -hmm. people that kind of are behind the scenes on the business too and mm -hmm. i just kind of hear the same thing it's like i'm the worst at that well, Billy Marks was definitely showing you some love, like that video I mentioned earlier. He's oh, cool. James fucking Hardy, dude. <laughs> love that guy. That's my guy. Um, but yeah, uh, 
a second ago, um, talking to Peter, he said that uh, Al- Jason Salilius or Alex Salilius. Jason. Whoever's on the All brothers, Hands. Right? Brothers, right? Yeah, Jason two and brothers, Alex. But yeah. they Jason's said that, the one that's on Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, they said that he was kind of, he was posting a bunch of pictures in biking. I guess he's really into biking and stuff. And then, like, his oh, sponsors man, dude, were kind of bi- coming to him. Like, he bikes like 100 miles a day. Yeah, he's that's awesome. what Peter said. Yeah. And so. Um, uh, Peter, that is crazy. That, that, that is, is insane. Too many miles. That's way too many miles, man. I saw him the other day. I was like, "Yo," I was like, "You're you're fit." Chill. I don't know, man. I bet his legs are pretty good shape. Oh, I bet they like, are. You I know what I mean? Skating like, at Sanctuary. We used to work there. And yeah. He was like, he was a like baby. Little kid. Oh, dude. He was, a he was an asshole, but he was so good. <laughs> He well, he's, he's definitely not an asshole now. He's not an asshole. Um, right, yeah. right. Well, Peter mentioned no shade, like, no but Peter mentioned uh, welcome, kind of getting on to him, like, hey man, I wish you'd post more pictures of like skating and stuff. And you and you could tell he was kind of being censored in a way, or being told like kind of what to. Po- it's like, dude, I want to uh, post you're my bike and stuff. If you let him censor, like, and that's Jamie why he was trying to like always get me to do social media. I'm like, dude, yeah. I'm not into it. And that's like, why I have no interest in it. Yeah, that's why I love Jason because he's like. Pfft. I don't give a fuck. I'll, yeah. I'll yeah. stay home and I'll work at this job and hang on my brother and hang on my f- close friends. You know, he's he's got a really good, like, close friendship with all the dudes he grew up with. Mm-hmm. And him and his brother are, like, best friends. They're cool as shit. Yeah, they like, are. They're, they're, they're like some of my Shout favorite. out to Jay, too. Yeah. He's really cool, too. Oh, Jay's the man. Yeah, he's and the that's man. the reason they're the man, because yeah. Jay's the man. Like, yeah, he's Jay, awesome. Jay, they're all, like, the shit. And so Jason, he he's just, he's like us. He's like, I don't give a shit about any of that like i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do like like they're like, it, like, they're like not. A, a legit skateboard family dude you know what i mean like, they're it's, so sick. it's there's not there's not so any sick. of those around here at all they're like my favorites they're yeah. so sick that's awesome. mini ramp in the backyard yeah like, don't you know what i mean yeah. don't give a damn like me or hate me don't care <laughs> so uh yeah we kind of talked about you know skateboarding is a young man's game and uh, definitely a short window there to like it used to be or it used you know to be mean? like because back in the day people were tired in that 22 you okay. know what i mean and then like i'm like well you cole's got, like, still killing it and you yeah know, you that's got what guys saying. that are like yeah legends in the sport and stuff when i said that earlier i meant like because when we grew up it was jumping yeah you know like i've had five neat five well, cabalero still i mean you know yeah like we've stuff. all been you know just because we grew up in the huck age well that's like, the thing man even when, when i was pro and he was turning pro skateboarding was still young yeah you know what i mean it's not really that old so it's still evolving from its earliest stages and we just happen to be in the, the jump transition phase. period sure of you know or okay or, or, or a one small transition period you know with like social media and all that and that's why i think like it's it's temporary mm-hmm. i mean like it'll always be around in some form i feel but sure yeah you know vinyl never really went out it comes and goes, and you know what I mean. And I feel like skateboarding, definitely. skateboarding will will be, do something similar in that sense, as far sure. as like, because dude, honestly, there was nothing like waiting, like waiting for a video to drop, mm-hmm. and then when it dropped, would you chill with those hot dog fingers? All right, continue though. You you would <laughs> can you hear them on the table. Yeah, I can hear yeah. them. On my... you, I mean, you would wait for months, even a year, for a video. Yeah, dude. And then you would watch it for years. Oh, dude. You know what I mean? Like, it, you would wear it out. You'd maybe have to buy another copy because you oh, watched man. it so much. And I, Toy I, Machine's I, good and evil. That was for me. Right? Like, and dude, how, ma- over how many? Over and over and over. So and I'm good. sure they're, they're out there, but how many of these Instagram clips it's just are like, watched <sighs> over and over and over? You know mm. what I mean? Like, I... I It'll, I mean, it's it's entertaining, yeah. you know. Everybody likes shit to be. Well, it's instant. just the constant feed of news yes. stuff, and just on to the next. On and, the but next. when it's so constant and so in your face all the time, it's like how it can, all how can any of it? Out, yes, you know what I mean. Yes, and, yes. And so yeah, companies are trying though. Like, um, like Death Wish just put out. I thought it was one yeah. Of the most oh, bad. the uncrossed yes. video was. Mm-hmm. Gnar. I thought I thought that was one of the most badass. Videos, it was super you know? gnar, yeah, and dude. you didn't know anything about what was going to be in that video. Sure. So credit to them for that. You know, like there's a way to go about it. Like, Instagram, and that was kind of a full. I mean, how long would you say that video was? <clears throat> Sixteen minutes, maybe. It wasn't long. Nah, you know, it was 15, Taylor. Sixteen minutes, but it's still like you got several parts, and they're all just yeah. jammed in there. Yeah, it was like Taylor. It's almost like one yeah. cut. Yeah. Taylor, yeah. Jamie, and like Pedro, they were yeah. you know doing all the shit. So I think. There's a way to adapt, and I feel like Death Wish did that. You know, they didn't let any of those clips sink out. You know, mm. photos or anything. Yeah. So, well, that's kind of where Zero was heading when I got on. Tame with Strange World. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
basically the team had gotten so big. Dude, your the, hot dog fingers. They were I thinking swear, that I can hear them. It's all good, out. man. It's all good. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, we can edit it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, they basically were like, we our team is so big, we can have a video where three or four people have full parts, and the rest of the team can have like share. Like yes, in yeah. a montage or whatever. Sure. Yeah. And that way, people could shine in different videos or whatever mm-hmm. kind of like how that promo video because what was it like tommy guns opened it mm-hmm. and there was a montage i can't remember the order it went but tommy guns you know closed. somebody tommy opened guns. the video with a bitchin part yeah and then it would go to a montage with the whole team or whatever yeah. or maybe you know and they would go to another part and that's kind of how they were going to go which is almost to me like a compromise between social media and you know what i mean you're 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 putting out shorter videos but you still get the whole team in it. Sure. Which is kind of okay. what, what touches upon what you were just what saying. What Death about. Wish was yes, able to do. Yes, what Death Wish, yes. Yeah. I feel like that's how Zero was trying to do it. Okay. But Death Wish is, I guess, pulled it off sure. a little better. Yeah, I think Death Wish and quite a few other videos kind of been like the Converse video where yeah. uh, Alexis Sablone has that part. I don't know if you guys saw that. If you don't, you need to watch it. It's amazing. Uh, she was the uh, one. Yeah. She was the one that was in PJ uh, Lads, One of Our Horrible Life. Yeah. Okay. Classic and, video. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And she came out with a new part. She's 34. Wow. And she killed it. And it was kick ass. You know, yeah. but it's like, oh, the part's awesome. not too long, but there's, you know, it's her part. And I want to say, I can't remember anybody else because that was my favorite part. But it's like a, <laughs> you know, it's like a three part video, but there's montages of everybody that's on the team. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that's. Kind Probably going to la- of like kind of showcasing your whole team. And, and I think so. that's going to last a while, and I think people that ride for those companies and they're you know doing those videos, I think they're smart about it, and they don't post anything that they're filming at the time because when those videos come out, I'm like I had no idea yeah. about that shit. So, yeah, and I think that's smart. But people that are just like, I did this gnarly ass trick today, and here it is on Instagram. You're like, <sighs> well, then it's old well, news. You see it later. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, mean, I already saw that. That might be the downfall of like some kids that mm-hmm. may be in the south and maybe around Alabama it's like they put everything they do but I guess I get it too in a sense because it's like they don't have anything you gotta make a name for yourself exactly you're trying to stand me, out in an ocean yeah of, so I get it yeah, in a sense people. it's like I get where they're coming from it's just it's I don't envy anybody that's in skateboarding right now it's a way harder game but keeping up with social media because he doesn't even have one I've got a no. private one that I don't want anybody to know about like I just post fun shit but people that are actually trying to make it, I feel way worse for them now than back in the day. Cause like when we filmed reason to believe it was like one of the funnest times ever. No one knew anything that was going to be in that video. And the mm-hmm. premiere was like, you the Oh, premiere? it was on dude. He had the spotlights <laughs> in the parking lot. We had the dunking booth. Dunking I think. Booth. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. there, man. I was there. I was yeah. like, Oh dude. Holy he was like shit. trying to yeah, dunk yeah, anybody. Yeah. I was about to say, so looking back on your careers in skating and stuff, was there any, any memorable injuries? I don't, or, don't. Or, we don't or, have to go there. Or, or, or at least in the degree I mean, of like anything you looked at, were like, man, if if I would have just like called it a day, you know, instead of trying to like, <laughs> you know, push through or get that one last trick, no, or maybe my, my park was my injuries was are done. always more like a, like a freak accident where like I'm doing great, I'm popping great, and then I, I'll hit like a pebble right before I pop or something, mm. and it, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, always, it was always something fucking weird that like you know what i mean so it's not the el toro where you're just like blow your knee out or something like that no no i i actually i shouldn't have el toro shouldn't have worked out because i tried to 50 it <clears throat> three times before i 5 would it and the third time i got to the end every time but i was leaning a little off you know what yeah. i mean so i would just jump off my board and then the third time i started to get a hill bruise and i was like if i don't this is try this the shit, next yeah, yeah, i don't yeah, want to come d- back yeah, and, yeah. and it worked out you know what I mean? And generally, it doesn't work out like that. If you feel a hill bruise coming, that's all you're going to focus on, and you're not even going to get into the trick right. So, Well, that was a gnarly yeah. trick, man. And uh, that Cinderella is, like, not even there anymore, right? Like, it's... <clears throat> no, they've changed it so they've much. They've changed yeah, it yeah, so yeah. much, and I've even seen, like, they put gates at the top Do you or see something? where the mountain biker guy went off the roof mm-hmm. into it? I think I, I they, saw They that. tore yeah. out the stairs to redo them. Okay. And while they were tore out, some dude rode off the roof into the into slant the, into or the whatever. bank. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know if I saw that. There's a fun oh. scooter video out there. Can we pull it up? Oh, the the <laughs> kid that backflips it. Have you seen that? He backflips El Toro. A kid backflips El Toro on a razor scooter. No, yeah, it's right, yeah. I gotta see it. Search that El Toro <laughs> backflip. Pretty, pretty laughable. Boom! There it is, dude. 
That's insane. That is pretty crazy. Dude, the world's insane. I mean, the tricks yeah. that have gone down on the outside rail at this point are bonkers. Dude, you know what's so funny crazy. is when I when I decided I wanted to try to five zero it. Um, at that point, uh, there probably weren't many big it had, tricks. Well, it had only been lip slid and Smith. Okay. And I didn't realize because Mumford smithed it, and that's what put it on. Is that's her what, chart. The lip slide in the first in the yes, it was in that the guy. Birdhouse video. Birdhouse but video. I didn't realize I didn't put the two together until later on. Yeah. Because you know the Smith came out, and I was like, damn, that rail's nuts. Yeah. And I, I had it in my head. I wanted to try a five zero it. And then I found out it was like the one that Heath had done. Mm-hmm. So it was already kind of like iconic. So I wanted to get in there because I thought somebody was going to five zero it soon. You know what I mean? So I gotta get and this trick, I man. Gotta get it down, gonna, yeah. You know, and I had no idea where that spot, like where it transcends even skateboarding. Yeah, you know? like somebody's done something crazy. on a dirt bike or something. But uh, but yeah, legend has the has it the the five o. I guess. Well, you tell me. Was the five o first try? Yeah. And so second. once you committed to the five o, it was first try. Yeah, I did. I five o it twice. Okay. So I tried three fifty fifties. All, all started three, feeling the hill bruise all yeah all three of them i i got on and i was leaning a little weird and i would just ride it out to the bottom and then jump to wherever and i you're was going leaning. like 50 miles an hour yeah. by the time you hit the end of the road i'm like all right <laughs> yeah. fine and then i started to get the hill bruise after the third try and i'm like all right <laughs> he was all on us i gotta i gotta <laughs> try the 5-0 yeah i make the first 5-0 but when my board hits the ground my feet shift so my back foot my foot shifts a little bit and my toe like touches the ground for a second and i'm like fuck no i made it you know I what i mean i, I rolled away and yeah. i'm like i could walk i could you know what i mean i'm like well i'm it. here i go i might as well I, I gotta try it again i gotta do a better one what's going through your head when you're charging i've never tried to charge el toro but i can imagine it's like well insane like jumping off a building well it was one know? of those things you know how i said like when, I, when i'd get to a rail i'd be like i think i can do this well that was the same thought i had with that and those three fifty fifties, I didn't make them, and they kind of pissed me off. Okay. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I know I can fucking fifty. So this. the I rage. Got, yeah, and so I was like, all right, well, yeah, I'm yeah. smacking I'm, your head with the board. Yeah, yeah, and I was getting mad that I had a, a heel bruise coming, and I'm like, God damn it, dude! If if that's what <laughs> keeps me from this, and then I tried it, and then my toe drug, and I'm like, I will never forgive myself if I settle for this. Dude. And so I went and tried it again, and so in blackout. You see the second one mm-hmm. is is the one that you see in the footage. Right, it's, it's the one from the this like if it, the, here's the rail. That's the first one, and then the straight on ones where where you no, I, I, there's two filmers there, so they're both from both angles. But so rake straw and I think the one from the side though is where you broke your nose but you rolled away. But then they show the straight on one, not straight. Oh yeah, I don't know how they edited it, but yeah, I uh, bitch, bitch I know. But yeah, he knows, well man. yeah, so. I still have that board. The I br- the second one I landed clean, <clears throat> but my front foot shifts a little forward and mm. I crack my nose. Oh, dude! So I was like, I touch my toe in the second one. And I was like, it cracked, and I'm rolling away, and I'm like, oh, thank God, because I didn't want to have to do it again on a yeah. broken board or a yeah. cracked board. Because I'm like, this thing is not gonna withstand that. But yeah, I did it first try, but you you see the second one. In the video. Now yeah. the filmer, his name was Danny Jassy. He ended up making this YouTube edit of all my raw footage. Okay, what did he? I think it's labeled Ben Gilly Five O's El Toro First Try, but it's edited to that song. It's all the clips. Do you chain hang low or whatever? It's, I think I've seen know, that yeah, actually. Well, yeah, that's the edit he that's did. The, uh, that's the. I, so, thought, I thought it was Three Six Mafia. No, no, it's okay. Chameleon uh, Air. Yeah, whatever it is. But <laughs> yeah. the you see all the clips. So when you watch that, you see every El Toro side. So you see the one where my foot drags, and I think they're in order. Mm-hmm. So you you see actually all the the ones. The first one I make it wasn't pretty, but I made it. You know what I mean? And then I made the second one. That's the one that got used. Well, either way, man, there's not a whole lot of people that say the five out El Toro. You know, so. I did it once, just I didn't film it. Yeah, yeah didn't film it. I was yeah. by myself that day, yeah, just, warming, up. It just warming up. Yeah, I yeah. was like, oh, shut up, Gilly. All right. just, just totally kidding. But yeah, so no memorable or, or looking back, you know, I kind of hit it. Yeah, we, we can gloss over that. Any any injuries? You know, I I know it takes its toll. No, you know, just I, skating in general. But anything where you think, man, if if I would have just like let it go, you know, maybe I could have avoided that. 
probably an infected Whatever. eye over here. <laughs> okay. An, an eye infection was that? Pink eye. Oh, was that Pink the baby eye? powder yeah. and, and all that stuff they threw on <laughs> it you? Was, was uh, yeah, I was just like sitting close to the van. You know, there's like a dude's butthole in your face. Yeah, so I got a little the pink, pink eye. eye never had pink eye in my life. N- me either. And I have Same. a daughter now. <laughs> but uh, um, I think like I wouldn't say like. Are you talking about like do I regret anything or like just any regrets in general or like injuries or <clears throat> just anything? No yeah. regrets. I don't have any regrets. Um, I would say I didn't. I wasn't smart enough when I was younger about things that were happening. And like I got, I would get knocked out, and I was like, "Oh, that's fucking funny." And it's like mm. now it's not so funny. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> any lingering well, effects from skateboarding that kind of still haunt you? Or? I mean, Peter talked about it. You know, with you. Guys. Yeah, he kind of a little bit like yeah, with the, like I'll have maybe the concussions or something. yeah, and I got knocked out maybe like. I want to say like eight times. Eight times. That's a lot of times. I've, I've that's a, that's a, a pro NFL career right there, man. That's crazy. Yeah, so I regret being just so like, you know, kind of just wild a little bit. Like, you know, slamming was just what we kind of did. You if know? you go back in time, you put on a helmet. And, and <laughs> I wouldn't even do that. I, I would just be less reckless. Like if there would be times where I'm like, if I'm going to eat shit, I'm going to eat shit. Now I'm like – Oh man, I could probably could have just like prevented that if I just like calmed down, you know, knew, thought about what I was gonna go to do. Like, like I think in the beginning of like my fallen video, there's like three head smacks, mm-hmm. wow. and all those were just like, well, I'm just going for it instead of like warming up or you know feeling. But that's like, what it takes, man. That's yeah. how. Oh yeah. You know, to... Well, back then, now it's like you can skate. I can skate your. But it's still not as cool. Like, who cares? You get. A... Tray flip, crook, knowledge. I mean, tray it's, out, not, like, it, it's not as cool to like our generation, but to kids these days, like you could see this basement and like it'll get a million views or something. I yeah, don't know, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So, well, I think I was just reckless. And, well, to, uh, to speak on what you just said, I think, and it ties back to earlier you're talking about just us skating fast. Like, I totally respect the fact that somebody can do that trick, mm-hmm. like 360 flip, crook to nollie half cab kick flip out or something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. If I could do that, it would be fun. It would be for us, but we but, just can't do it. But like, we had nowhere to. I get more shit. enjoyment watching somebody haul ass just doing a Smith grind, sure, on like a ledge or something. You know what I mean? To me, I get more enjoyment out of that. I respect the other trick we spoke on, but like, I respect it because it's hard. <laughs> but that's why I respect it because I know it's hard. I don't get as much enjoyment watching it. You know what I mean? I'm like, sure. ooh, damn. That yeah, was we all hard. have our skaters that skate in the style that yes. we emulate, and we yeah. want to like, you know, yeah, watch like, those dudes. Like Jason Silios, he's yeah. from here, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, he's probably one of my favorites. He doesn't skate like we skated, you know. Mm-hmm. Like he no, does, he not does, at his, all. he does his own shit. He's his own person, own you know, individual. I think that's rad. Yeah, and much respect to that. We just grew up in a different time where it was just like that's. Yeah, I was it, more you, mimicking what I like saw. Like, Jason's so yeah. original. We weren't thinking about that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, Jason's just original. We were just like, this is what you got to do to get on zero, to get on yeah. fallen, mm-hmm. to get on real. And so now it's like... like I can go big. I can go hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know like, what I mean? Jason, yeah. Jason's original, and, like, he does his own shit. And I like his attitude, and that's why he does his own shit. Because he's like, you like me or you don't. Like, fucking take it or leave it. So, So that's just the difference, like... And maybe Jason saw that by seeing us grow mm-hmm. up. Maybe not, but I feel like he's like, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want, and you can take it or leave it. And I think that's super respectful. Yeah, so. very admirable. Yeah, awesome. I, I hope they learned from our mistakes. That would be, uh, I think they be nice. 100% did. <laughs> but, yeah, man, so moving forward, Birmingham is finally getting a skate park. Uh, yep. Talked at length with Peter about that and just all the – He's the reason it's happening. Yeah, he 100%. is absolutely 100% the reason it's happening. Yep. And yep. I, I tried to, like, kind of – talk about that and he was just like oh the city council's changed and the city's changed and that's why we're getting it and i'm like no dude no, no, you no, no, no. are the reason like you've been he, fighting so hard and- he's the reason yeah. yeah when i yeah i moved here 97 i believe when i moved here and him a guy named danny croom hot dog fingers uh, joel dombowski who did uh the videos Filmers, like yeah. they all they were trying to rent a warehouse downtown to do you're like a skate park at Tampa or something type. Just of like a park. private park. Just a well, not a not a private park. I mean, well, basically, yes, a private park that was open to the public. I, okay. You wanna, but you know, a wooden skate park sure. in a warehouse. In a warehouse. And nobody would rent to them because once they found out what they wanted to do, they were like, nope. 
because of insurance or whatever. Insurance, yeah. You know what I mean? Like skating rinks started closing down. Yes, exactly. And so, I mean, from the moment I got here, they were all looking at warehouses, trying to rent warehouses, trying to figure some way to do a skate park. And, I mean, 2020, if it's finally when we get news. You know (laughs) what I mean? That, like, we finally are getting something. I mean, yeah, from from my side of the view, I'm from Huntsville. I got a park when I was... Like I said, going on 13. Yeah. And that is, I don't like to say this, but 20 years ago. Wow. Yes, until my age. Um, But, yeah, so that park's been there. And Huntsville's, you know, Birmingham's the city in Alabama. It's the biggest city. And it's like, uh, in me, to my opinion, it's, you know, the most, like, uh, progressive city and everything should be coming you know you got 20 coming through if you're trying to go east or west you got 65 you're trying to go to the beach you know you're trying to bring in people to make money and you know have a reason to do all these things why all these local businesses are popping up and you know that's why peter's been around for so long you know it's like you're in a cross point where someone's going east or west or north or south and somehow birmingham doesn't have a park my parents live on dolphin island there's a skate park there really how does that make sense and Birmingham doesn't. It's I think crazy. Montgomery had one. It was just Dude, like a Auburn like has kind a, of a Auburn every has little it. county or or somewhere surrounding Birmingham uh, has a skate park. Auburn so, um, Auburn has level. one. That's yeah, kick Auburn's ass. Yeah. Which don't like Auburn, but you know. Anyway, but <laughs> roll tide, <laughs> roll tide. But and then Tuscaloosa has two. So yeah. it's like how in the world? One and a half. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that one. That's a little guy. <laughs> hey, it's fun though. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not, but I'm not throwing shade. It is kind of crazy you know yeah. even Hartzell I mean not that it's anything fun but it's something to go skate and so it's just kind of ridiculous so, and, and Peter's been on the forefront to try mm-hmm. and get this done for years on years and years so and you you guys were around when Homewood Park oh mm-hmm. yeah yeah big we time. used to ride the bus to Homewood yeah. Park and, and, Dude, and the, we knew that that wasn't gonna last and the I mean sh- the moment yeah. they built well the area I was Dude. just like y'all put a skate park here yeah and, really? and prefab metal yeah prefab metal just on a concrete echo. slab yes, dude. loud and then they, they started as all building happen. those condiments or uh kind of the condos. condominiums or whatever yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm like wait a minute yeah whatever <laughs> they're like uh, I'm like wait they're like 50 feet away from the skate park yeah. this skate park's not gonna last no. yeah sure enough yeah got rid of all of it R.I.P. but I Real talk, because so many people complained when they were building it, and they saw the ramps that were out there that weren't assembled yet. And I'm like, you guys are going to be bitching when this is gone. You can cry about it now because it's not what you wanted, but guarantee you, you're going to end up loving it. Yeah, And dude. Then when it's gone, you're going to cry about it. And sure enough, I, I still miss that part. It was a so shitty those, part. Yeah, it was a yeah. shitty part, but, those but it some, was fucking fun. That's yeah. smooth gold, concrete, days. man. Dude, so that's smooth yeah. concrete, and then... The little flat bars right next to the box. Dude, they had... Like, oh, so sick. He all was, that he, mini ramp, all that... There was a box and these two kicker ramps. Yeah. That's all that, That's that's all it was. If you ever want to see him do flip tricks, it was when Homewood Park was open. And this motherfucker was doing all kinds of <laughs> crazy shit that I'd never seen him do. I was like, oh, okay. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I can do flip tricks. I just don't like them. He doesn't like them. No. But the new park, man, it's going to like rival, uh, you know, we've thrown around uh, thrown around Louisville Park. Yes. Yeah. The you size know, of Louisville. Have you, have you been there? I have, yeah. It's massive. It's massive. And I've heard yeah. it's going to be uh, bigger like, than What Peter Louisville. was talking about. Yeah, yeah bigger. I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's the one thing. I was like, how is it going to be bigger than Louisville? That's like, <laughs> right. this is the biggest well, park I've ever been to. Yeah. I'm still in the mindset of, I'll believe it when I see it. There you go, Amen, man. You know what I mean? Amen. Like, I, like, we have been told or promised I know, or, man. like, had our hopes, you know. It, it, and, mm. and poor Peter. I just would like to know the number of about DIY spots that he spent money on to help yeah. skating in Birmingham. Didn't Red Bull, like, sponsor one that you guys – I saw some pictures. Yeah. You, like, helping build the yeah, concrete we, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, we were all there, yeah. but – and, but and it didn't yeah, last. Yeah. And they tore just, it down in like three months. Mm-hmm. It's it's crazy. Stupid. Yeah. Well, anyways. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You know, it's not our land. But, you know, it's an abandoned area. Yeah. It's, well, it's an area where homeless people are vacating and, and hanging out. And so we literally come and sweep it up and clean it up and build some stuff for people to. And, and we're not you know, against homeless people. Yeah. No, no, like, I know. But yeah. I'm just saying, like, it's. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, and that's the other thing is like I'm not woke enough, but you know I'm just saying like uh, <laughs> I was trying to branch off of you and say like we you know like if they're hanging out there it's like we just say what up and stuff that's all I was saying sure. it's like yeah. yeah like 
we don't give a shit. Like, whatever. Like, we're just trying to have a, a place spot. to like, skate. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, sleep here all you want. Like, here's some water at the end of the day. Right. Like, we're trying to be good, you know, members of the community, you know, which yeah. is Birmingham. And so, yeah. Well, I'm every, just saying, every, like, every you, time they tear them down, you're like, damn it. Yeah, you again? Can let people Come like, again, like yeah. live here, but we're only going to be here for a few hours out of each day yep. skating. You know what I mean? And, like, we get kicked out, but. But if we move in, we're fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, that's what's frustrating. Yeah. It's yeah. very, well, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully the plaza does happen. I'm really excited about World it. World Games 2020, whatever. Well, it, whatever. It, 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 it actually, it yeah. I mean, it's, it, from what I hear, it's it's actually that's, happening. That's what I've heard. But, and, yeah, like you said, until uh, I see yeah. some Dude, trucks, I, you, yes. know, the, you know, pulling them. That's why we got to have these podcasts so we can talk about that. That's right. Yeah. Just get, dream get, about it. Yep. And then when I'm 50, you know, when we finally do and get And then one. everybody will tag them in this podcast and then be like, damn it. You remember that? Dude, yeah, I, I mean, I moved here '97. I was about 17, 18. I'm 42 now. We're just Ooh, now getting a skate park. He gave it you know away. What I mean? Like, I mean, well, people can do math. Um, I'm sorry, I'm you're, you're, <laughs> I can't do math. I didn't go to college. You're only but, as old as you feel. But I'm yeah. just saying, yeah, like, as as you feel. Yeah. If, I'm, I'm thankful it wasn't when I was in my 50s. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, at least I can still go fucking skate. Yeah, go skate and, yeah, and yeah, shred yeah. and like have fun. Cause you know. I went to Tuscaloosa, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, take a couple good slams, and you're like, all right, I can I can still take a good slam. Okay, you know what I mean? Cool. You, you don't. Okay, I'm a family man now. I, I don't. I haven't taken a <laughs> slam like that in a while. And then so you take a good couple, and you're like, all right, I still got it as far as like being able to take a fall. I might not be able to do all the tricks I want to do, but I can at least get back up from failed tricks. Yeah, and that's really all it is. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, like for me, like I'm younger. Yeah, a lot younger than him. But anyway. <laughs> but no, I feel like Peter and Ben, in a sense, mo- mostly in Peter, age. but Ben, you know, they're kind of like two in the same. They helped build this whole scene, which is sure, the skate scene in Birmingham. And I would like to see Peter have a skate park, dude. Uh, I, I would like, I would like to see Ben uh, have a skate park. He deserves it, damn it. Yeah, well, dude, uh, and, Peter and he deserves I, it too. I and I, I want to be there when yeah. they get to skate it. I think right. that'd be rad. So. Yeah. Well. Especially like during my label days and stuff, Peter and I have always joked that we paid each other's rent mm. several times over. <laughs> you know, him buying my boards and selling them. You know, I got paid from him buying them, and then he got paid from selling. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was just like it's it's always it's been a very mutual beneficial relationship. You know, I, I help support the shop. The shops would help elevate me. Big so time. it was it was awesome to be able to go through my career and and keep faith. Oh, it was so rad you know seeing I mean? you like, like Favo Altura with the face shirt on, dude, or, yeah, like, oh. or like that Nolly Trey over the would, thing with the face. Just yeah. to bring up stuff like where you get sweated, like how he got sweated about the Black Label video. Oh yeah, yeah. I had the only. This is the biggest interview I had. I'm not bragging by any means, but I had like a 15 page interview. Everything I had was just faith stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my sponsors were like, "What in the hell are you doing? Like, you could have been paid 15 grand for all this." And at the time, you know, I was like, "Well, I still wouldn't care." But I was like, "I don't care. It's just faith." Yeah. yeah, you know, I wouldn't have this interview if it wasn't for them. Right. So. Sure. Yeah. But I, I think that's a, the love for your skate <clears throat> shop was a lot different back then. For you sure. know, because I feel like everything's so instant and everything's online now. Back then, everything was more hands on. You went to the physical shop. You were within the. Scene. It was a clubhouse. It was, it was a clubhouse. A, yeah. Yes. And I think exactly. I think it's getting. Like I think Peter mentioned, it, it's like ten year cycles, you know. Yeah, maybe we're coming. You you talked about like the whole go local Dude, thing, I, and like, like maybe yeah, we're coming yeah. back to but that. That's what, yes, I feel I, like. Yeah, I think everything comes back around. Yeah, I think we're on the tail end of like skate shops don't matter. I think now, like we're we're trying to get the band back together. You know, we're trying yeah. to do everything we can, and it's Sweet. it's obvious. And like, there's you know people yeah. constant customers that come in, you know, that you recognize, and so. I think it's going to come back around. Things will yeah, cause shake, I think, shake back around. So. Like Instagram and all all that stuff was so it's, new. Yeah, it's so diluted it, now, it, too. It, like, it took over because mm-hmm. that's what everybody was into. But I think everybody's gotten tainted, or I'm hoping I, I people agree. are getting tainted on it. Yes. Yes. You know, It's like, like I said, you can't retain. <clears throat> you know, you see a cool trick, but like, it's cool to see it in a whole part with the whole person you see his whole repertoire mm-hmm. you see it one clip like you want to see it again you have to like go back through their feed yeah. to find yeah. it. I, I, I guess that's how it works i don't you know what i mean like i don't i have so little interest in social media sure. that like i don't even know what it's like to watch skate videos on it you know yeah. what i mean like 
Hashtag if you like it, like if, if you like a person, do you just go to their page and like watch one clip at a time, or it, I don't know, it's don't weird know. to me. You know what I mean? I, I'm so not into it. Like I'm, I'm foreign, so I don't know how it's gonna last. Maybe I'm. A well, that was me, man. You know I was I mean? kind of well in the same boat. I was kind of asking Peter like what the future looks like as far as like like it's just such a different world now, and it feels like anybody with an iPhone has a you know an account yeah. with a million views, and yeah, it's like. It's so diluted. I guess we keep saying that over and over, but it's wild. it is. It's weird because like, how I don't understand how like a company like Toy Machine, which is such a dope company, so dope, yes, can be relevant when everybody just wants to watch Instagram clips. Yeah. And so like now, does Toy Machine have to become an Instagram company, or can they like weather this phase? I don't. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Yeah. I, I haven't kept up with it, honestly. I don't know what's going on in skateboarding now. You know what I mean? So yeah, most of the stuff uh, I consume is YouTube. You know, like yeah. Instagram. It's just like who cares? You know, I yeah, can't keep up. But like, you know, Thrasher seems to be dominating the online yeah. uh, landscape of skate videos nowadays. And uh, so, I well, know. you know, I, I where I work now, we're still I'm still in like another a warehouse, and we'll have a computer, and I'll just pull up Thrasher's YouTube channel and just hit play. That's so all, like, that's I'll the only working, way you, can keep, you know what yeah. I mean? And uh, so every now and then I'll look by, I'll see a couple tricks of some, you know what I mean? So at least I'll see I'm like, "Oh, what the fuck was that?" You yeah. know what I mean? And so I'll start what I'm doing, I'll go back and I'll I'll backpedal a few frames and be like, "Oh, that was so and so." And you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it I try to always have it on somewhere in the background, but like I don't keep up with it. I don't I'm not like, it's "Hey, hard did to keep you see up the latest with. part?" Yeah, Moves exactly. Fast. That's the Moves thing. Fast, like yeah. everything got so crazy that I like I didn't know where to get in. You know yeah. what I mean? I can't imagine what it's was Just revel like. in the glory days of skateboarding. Well, yeah. What's it like for somebody that got into skateboarding six months ago, a year ago? Yeah. Like, it's such a different landscape than when I got into it. Like, right. it's. I wonder what keeps people hooked. Well, that's why Peter's good at it, because he can adapt and <laughs> change, and that's why I think Faye's been around for so long, too. I but know, I, But man. I'm saying kids yeah. that don't have, but just kids that are, you know, just getting into skateboarding and like they know it from street league and stuff. Yeah, that's such a weird way to look at skateboarding for me. Sure, you know what I mean, because yeah. moving out to California, you go to a putt putt golf place and they have a skate park there. You know it, what I mean? They also have skate lessons in middle schools. But uh, yes, but, that's see, that's so foreign, to right, me, man? Like <laughs> what? But then, like, but you know what's funny is that out there, I saw the the little league parents but skateboard versions yeah right we're like i literally heard a mom yelling at her son that she, <laughs> he needs to do he'll I flip it was like no it was like an indie grab or something you need to do that and you know your dad's gonna make you do it right when he gets here Benny Hanna, and i was what? like what the fuck are that's you doing so this crazy kid, man? yeah like, man I, I guarantee you that kid hates world. skateboarding right now sure. you know what i mean like sure. he was like a little guy there's no way he likes skateboarding. You want your kids to love it as much as you did. <laughs> yes, or, or or she saw yeah, the, the potential X Games act, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, oh, God. Uh, I'm sure like, you guys see Miss Led Youth. Yes. So Ryan Bobier. Yeah. He, maybe not him, per se, but his best friend, like, when I first moved out there, he's like, he was like, yeah, me and Ryan used to go to Skate P. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> y'all, just, y'all just hung out? And I was like, what is that? He's like, oh, it's just where you can skate for an hour. And then you go do your next block. I was like, what? That's was like, so crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. Doesn't sound real. I couldn't even carry my skateboard to high school. You know like, how they even saw it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, I can't even, I'm not even riding it. I just want to like throw it in my locker. Yeah. That's how I get home. Uh-huh. No, you can't have it. You know? you know how many years that would take for Alabama to even think about that? Like, and this was happening. I'm talking shit. Try going to high school. In 1999, dude. I know, man. <laughs> and they, they, 1999, they're having skate pee. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah, coming from the south and making it skateboarding, no easy feat. So, uh, really rad to like hear your side of the story. And making it. Making it. Well, I mean, at least uh, in my eyes, you made you it. You made it. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, funny? It, it it feels like that when you first get sponsored and all that. And now at my age, it yeah. literally it literally feels like uh, like an old job I had. Sure, you know what I mean. Okay, it, it doesn't feel grand 
or anything. You know what I mean? Uh, trust me, the trips and the experiences were and the friendships, that's yeah, friendships well, yes. and the experiences, uh, yeah. and that's what you but, have to. Yeah, but you get that at work. You have a dope ass work crew in your restaurant or sure. warehouse, yeah. wherever you are. Like it's fun and yeah. like it was very similar. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I got to get paid to do what I liked for a while, and it was awesome. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, I don't feel like it defines me. You know sure. what I mean? Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's it, a whole life to live. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even really talk about it to my daughter or anything. Right. It's just like it comes up and like. I'm going to bring it like, up to her I, next, we, we, next, we, next On, next on the break, we're outside know? pissing, and I'm like, you know what? It feels like we're talking about me throwing the, the um, touchdown pass at homecoming. You know what I mean? Okay. It, it, you know what yeah. I mean? It's oh, like, yeah. it, it just feels silly that we're, you know, I – I don't know. I don't. I guess I'm the not, impact like, that you had, at least. I don't want to say what you're into was silly. Sure. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. trying to say. And that, I get it. I get it. I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, you don't want to talk about that one play for the rest of your life. I get it. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? That's. Yeah. It almost feels like that. But it's, sure. But it's flattering at the same time. Sure. It's like a bittersweet kind of feeling. I you know you. what I mean? Like I. I. Yes, it's cool being recognized and this and that, but it's also very awkward. Sure. You know what I mean? Well, thank you for, for humoring so us yeah. and yeah. coming to talk because, in you know. Yeah, talk skateboarding and stuff. This is really rad having you yeah. guys on. And dude, it's actually dope to have just people locally that are still into the scene. Dude, you know what I mean, it's, like, yeah, it's uh, runs it in your blood. I makes guess. me feel guilty for not keeping up with as much. We're getting the band <laughs> back together. I'm gonna show them some skate videos soon. So we got it. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been watching <laughs> a little bit here and there. You ain't been watching shit. I, don't, I said a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say a lot. Wait.